freak out there. You can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. What do all men power want? More power. My name is Gianluca Zanna. I was an Italian by birth, and I became an American by choice. Our lives and freedoms are in danger. This is not a dream. If you're listening to this broadcast, you are the resistance. Welcome to Love, Guns, and Freedom. Here we go, guys and girls. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zanna on Talks 1340 AM. Also, of course, on LoveGunsFreedom.com, where you can listen also to the all past shows. Probably last Sunday, uh, if you were listening to the airwaves, uh, 13.40 a.m., a 104.1 FM, uh, you say, well, I had already heard that show. Yes, it was a replay. I wasn't around. Everything was okay. I wasn't sick. I wasn't, you know, desperate, thinking about, you know, the, 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 the meaning of life. Sometimes, you know, I get kind of philosophical. No, everything was fine. I just, I was very busy. I was in the middle of shooting uh, a video and photos, more important, for some of the new rifles that, you know, SCADI. I was closing the SCADI project with Charles Black, my director, and also with Hannah from Havasu. Now, back to business. I mean, back to this business. This is the hour about freedom. Many times, as I said, uh, I don't really have the desire to be on the air. People say, well, why are you even here there? You're right. Why am I here? I tell you now why I'm here. I never, I, you know, I have a dream list, things I would like to do before I die, but never was really, I want to become a radio guy. Couldn't care less. I don't need a microphone. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine ready what I do in my life. But when I see what's going on around and the level of uh, tyranny that every day we are facing as Americans and also as humanity, I believe really this is my little duty that I need to do, at least when I learn something, when I'm aware of something, to try to share this information with whoever wants to listen. That's why I'm here. Sometimes it's overwhelming. Sometimes really, this is not really retribution. Because I tell you, all my guests that I had on my show, me, most of my guests, they got arrested or they're spending time in jail for no crimes, no crimes at all. Just as political, you know, just as political prisoners, some of them. Uh, I'm not kidding. Some of them, they got also got killed. Lavoy, Finicum, he got killed. Cold blood. Yes, he was on my show. I have many other guests. They got arrested. They are waiting for trial. What do you think? I'm here as the host that also have my own personal opinions. And I stick my neck everything I can, every time I can in things that probably I shouldn't. According to, you know, now, according to the federal government, if you like on Facebook one of the posts from the bandits, you may be guilty by association. That's according to the prosecutor that right now is federally prosecuting the bandits family. Just because you give a like to one of their posts, you may be part of a conspiracy. This is insanity. If I, if I knew that 20 years ago, I would be laughing. Now it's becoming, it is reality. That's why I'm on the show. That's why I say I commit myself to be here because everything I can do to bring some light in what we are facing as humanity, as also as Americans, this is serious. And when I say humanity, you know, I, I'm an American first, be clear. I'm not a global citizen, okay? Be very sure about that. But I tell you, what's happening to us is not an accident. It's already been happening in Australia, in England, in Italy, in Germany. So we are all human beings right now from different nationalities. I believe in, in, in this sort of sovereignty. At the same time, we are facing a threat as humanity. We are all under danger of global tyranny. That's what it is. It's a global plan. It is not just an American problem. So now I want to bring on the show somebody that I really like. I tell you, I like she's a great lady. She's a young lady. She's also a political activist. When I say activist, means that she doesn't sh stay put. When uh, she sees things that they are not right, she doesn't go with the plan. She opens her mouth. She expresses herself. And that, for me, what means to be activist. That means you are not a slave. You're not a sheep. And also, she ran for a Libertarian Party for the Senate uh, last elections. And, uh, by the way, now I can tell you that I voted for her. <laughs> yes. And I'm not even a Libertarian. I have no parties. No party allegiance. And sometimes you know, I make mistakes myself, be clear. I try. I try to always use my brain, and like I invite you to use your brain, and sometimes I regret it. But guess what? At least I want to admit when I'm wrong. I want to say, yes, I knew we, we, we were pretty much wrong, but now I know for sure. Now, what are you talking? Look, are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I just drank three coffees. I'm fine. 
But let me bring her on so we can articulate what's going on right now as Americans. We are facing one of the probably worst moment that we ever face. People say, no, it's impossible. We are with, the, with, the, with, the, with no Trump. Make America great. I wish it was like that. I really wish. Marissa Hamilton from Phoenix, Arizona. Are you there? I am. How are you doing, Ivana? Okay, I hope you didn't fall asleep with my intro uh, because I'm kind of freaking out, honestly. I already read the articles, different articles about uh, Attorney General Jeff Session being very happy, I would say trigger happy, uh, to pretty much enforce these laws that already been on the book for many years. I mean, this is not like a, a see something coming with his administration, but really Jeff Session loves these civil asset forfeitures. Am I right with my English? Because my accent is always so bad. Did I say it right? Yes, you did say it right. Okay, please articulate. Because many people say they think, what is that? Something to eat? Civil what? Civil assets? Uh, let's explain in a few words exactly what it means for the average slave out there, people like us, uh, this type of uh, new level of enforcement of an already unconstitutional law. In my opinion, you know, I don't need to be a Supreme Justice to tell you this is unconstitutional, but of course, many other judges agree with me. Tell me, what means that? Sure. So civil asset forfeiture is basically set by the state. And what happens is that when someone has been um, suspected of a crime, they don't actually even have to be charged with a crime or, um, ha or, um, or even be in the process of being prosecuted. They just need to be suspected, and the police then can take their stuff. Um, this typically happens in two, three different scenarios in Arizona. Um, one scenario is when they pull you over for anything. They could pull you over because you have a headlight out or something like that. Um, they, if they ask to search your vehicle, they can take anything that's inside your vehicle. Wow. Um, if they, with the, um, latest, what I call the Mesa version of stop and frisk, where they've been, um, arresting people for jaywalking, jaywalking. they can search someone that's in, that's a pedestrian, um, and take their stuff. Wow. Um, and then also if they do the same thing in your house, they can take your stuff. Now, Arizona did sign, uh, the Arizona governor did sign a law earlier this year that um, increased the burden of proof before they could take your stuff. Um, but it really didn't go far enough because it, it still creates a police profit model. Mm. Um, and the reason why I say that is because the federal government has a deal that even when it's a federal government case, um, they will split the profits with the local police when the police deal sees your stuff. Jeez. Wow, this is, uh, this and then the police can use it for whatever they want. Um, and it actually ends up being, uh, between 2008 and 2015, there was 55,000 seizures of over $3 billion Gee. of people's stuff. People that have not been convicted of a crime. This is a big incentive, by the way. I mean, it's like, uh, how to fix budgets and, you know, try to create more uh, military police because when they need to buy more guns or whatever, more tanks, whatever <laughs> they need, this is a great opportunity to say, after all, we know where to get the money here now. And uh, good, luck exactly. to get, good luck to get them back because, you know, you need to get an attorney. Uh, this is exactly, again, as I said, you know, you don't need to be a lawyer or a Supreme Court justice to understand that. All you have to do is read our Bill of Rights and the basic Constitution. I mean, are we all innocent until proven guilty? Yes or not? That's the bottom line. Uh, so they give you, they, and also more important, the burden of proof supposed to be in our system on the government, not on us try to uh, prove that we are innocent. Because otherwise we'll go back to the Napoleonic system. There's pretty much also the Italian system and the European system. Okay. So do you agree with me or not? Well, I, I do, but I think that there's one important point that's missing here, and that's the fact that civil asset forfeiture steals your stuff that is unrelated to any crime you're even being suspected of. Yeah, on top. It steals yeah. all of your assets that yes. have nothing to do with anything they're saying you're suspected of, and typically it's from it starts off with like a minor traffic incident or a minor I cross the street type of an incident, and then they can take whatever cash you have on hand, um, any type of valuables you have in your vehicle, including. Um, your handguns or things like that, they can just take them and keep them. This is so um, even though it has nothing to do with what you were stopped for, suspected for, or anything. Wow. It, it is purely theft. They can seize whole bank accounts. 
They can seize your retirement funds. <sighs> they can seize your house. They can seize anything they anything you, they want. How do we protect ourselves if if there is any chance? Because I tell you, um, the point is that without money, I mean, without assets, you cannot even hire an attorney to defend yourself. When they take all your stuff, you are pretty much exactly. In the street. I mean, what do we do? Exactly. Well, the thing is, is that right now, the people of America and Arizona are fighting from a defensive position. Some people are trying to say that the bill, uh, HB 2477, that the governor signed earlier this year, is was sufficient, but it's not. The federal government, um, their policies always trounce state policies. And if the federal government's giving more financial incentives, that law is going to do nothing to protect us. Yeah. Um, at this point, I think people need to take their blinders off. And stop just listening to the political rhetoric during a campaign and really look at what people say they stand for um, and look at what their past actions have been. Jeff Sessions has had a horrible record when it comes to civil rights. He's had a horrible record when it comes to criminalizing victimless acts. He promised that he was going to push on civil asset forfeiture. Um, and, and also back in February, Trump promised in a conference, in, in a, um, a meeting with sheriffs, they went on video at one point in time, and he bragged about the fact that he was going to do this, wow. um, combined with the fact that he's going to go after um, people that smoke marijuana, which, again, is a complete victimless act. In fact, it's considered medicine in most states in America now. Um, so this is a very dangerous, dangerous man when it comes to liberty, human rights, and civil rights. And as far as what we can do, we need to, like, I don't know why people aren't marching in the streets, why there's not this huge march on Washington, D.C. Um, from everybody, from everybody. You know, this is not, this is not just like um, a Black Lives Matter type issue. This is, this is something that greatly affects people of all races and all economic statuses. Gee. No, you know, it's really disturbing. You know why? Not just what they're doing on their side. Also, how people are reacting. For example, I post uh, uh, an article that you post originally. I posted on my Facebook. Okay? This was from the Washington Post. Sessions green lights police to seize cash. Property from people suspected of crimes, but not charged. Then there is, of course, the video. Play the video. You can see him, okay? All the facts, everything. It's, it's on mainstream. And, of course, you can find it everywhere. Then is some, some idiot. Uh just because he's a Trump supporter, or a, a, a completely in denial, you know, this is uh, just, it's, it's all about because the Washington Post is, is a bunch of liberals or whatever. I mean, not even trying to verify the source. Uh, all they do, it's like, as I said, they idealize their guys, in this case, you know, because Jeff Session must be up good, because after all, Trump must be good. Okay, so doesn't right. matter what they do, they're always good. And if there is something wrong, probably must be just the media reporting a bunch of lies. You know, don't get me wrong, I know about fake news, okay? But there's a point that we need to look at facts here, and this is a fact. And I don't care... Yes, this we, is a fact. This is a fact. You know, I don't care where you stand, if you're left, right, or middle, that's not the point. This is really a violation of every basic human rights that we live, if we live in a free society, if we live under completely tyranny, let's say under dictatorship, that would be a normal day in hell. But the point is we're supposed to be a republic, we're supposed to have a bill of rights, we're supposed to build all innocence until proven guilty, we're supposed to have, a, I mean, how many things in the bill of rights this is violated? I mean, this is insane. But my point is Trump is part of this, and I'm the first one to say, you know what? On this one, I'm guilty, too, because uh, as much as I understood and I knew that Trump was a big question mark and a lot of things in the past that they weren't making sense, I just couldn't go for sure to get Hillary. And I gave him the vote, and I regret right. it. I regret it, and I, I, I'm honest about it. I knew I wasn't naive. I never said this guy's going to be a freedom guy. At the same time, I just, whatever, I follow my instinct then. But now I must tell you something. I say, wait a second, guys. Uh, we wanted to put some sort of, you know, band-aid on cancer for a moment. Okay, now we got to work on the new cancer that we have. Because this is, if this is not cancer, yeah. I mean, this is as bad as you can get from Obama. Seriously, this is nothing, not because he's not now waving the red flag in the street. This is probably is the same type of tyranny, <laughs> just with a different type of co color shade. I mean, for Well, the interesting thing, too, I'm not a fan of, of Obama by any means at all. Mm -hmm. um, but the interesting thing here is that Obama is the one that did, a, did had a study done to see what was happening. 
and then he killed the program. I know. I mean, and I, that I, was that. and that was the reason why he killed the Savasa forfeiture program. It's one of the few th- good things that he did. Yeah. Um. And and during the campaign season, it was very clear that Trump was going to bring this back. But I don't quite think people understood what that meant. Like most people looked at it as like when Trump talked about his stop and frisk policy, how he was super excited to bring that back. Most people just think that means that he's going to be going on a bunch of thug drug dealers. And having police, you know, take out criminals. But that's not the way stop and frisk works. No. As what we're seeing in Mesa, stop and frisk is just attacking regular pedestrians, regular pedestrians trying to go about their day. And it typically attacks people that are already in um, very oppressive uh, situations, especially in Arizona, because you're not walking around on the street in Arizona unless you can't afford a car. Yeah. Um, and when I went to court the other day, um, there was someone in there was someone in court that had been in there. The three people that were in there, there was one person in court that she was had a criminal charge against her for littering at the airport. Apparently, it's criminal, not not like a misdemeanor, criminal to um, litter at the airport. Wow, that means if I or, if I, if or if not I, civil, but it's, wait, it's yeah, it's if, criminal to litter at the airport. If I drop, then uh, there was another person. Oh my gosh. Sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. If I drop, let's say, a, 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 an apple, if I drop a, a little a paper or whatever, a little bit of garbage, like, you know, I'm, I'm eating a, a, something and I drop the plastic. That, that's bad, by the way. I'm, I'm not condoning that. That's not just a fine. You tell me that now I'm going to face a, a, a trial for criminals? Yes, that's oh. exactly what occurred. And oh, she's, oh she's facing criminal charges for living at the airport. Oh, my God. Um, another person that was in there, he was cited for not having a license. Um, when he had already had to pay out thousands of dollars to rectify a previous legal situation. And so he got a job, which is good. That's what we want to happen, right? So he got a job, um, but in order to be able to get to work, he had to drive his car because there wasn't any type of public transportation to get him there. And so then he got cited for not having a license, even though it was just the paperwork was being processed to have it reinstated. And so these are the type of small, small things like the just bad situations, unfortunate situations that people are in that things like civil asset forfeiture, stop and frisk, um, this pedestrian program that's happening in Arizona, that's who it's impacting. It's the people that are the most unfortunate already and they're trying to build a better life and it's the state just knocking them down again and again and again. Um, and like when I was in jail for, when I got arrested for, um, for protesting, Um, the three people that were in jail with me, besides the grandmother that was arrested along with me, was arrested for not having bus passes on them. They, all three of them had, um, membership bus passes, like month-long bus passes, but they just forgot it. Mm. And they got arrested and put in jail. Oh my God. These are the, like, our process, our criminal system today is completely unjust. And it's not, and and the civil asset forfeiture is kind of like one of those icing on the cake things that motivates the police to to increase going after victimless crimes rather than going after things that actually keep your family safe. The more we have police taking, pulling people over for like headlights and and walking and, and crossing a road, that means that there's fewer police out there stopping murders, stopping catching and stopping rapists, um, stopping pedophiles. And so these programs inherently make us less safe. Yeah. And they are just simply there to be a profit center for the police. But if, um, let me ask you something. You know, I, you I, know, I, I sorry, if I interrupt you. Sorry, I, know, I know there's a pattern here because we need to connect the dots. People say, "What the heck is going on? Is they all going crazy?" You no, know, I think there is a logic. First of all, there is like, uh, let's say, cui bonus, cui benefit. I mean, there is always somebody at the end that uh, benefits such behaviors. Okay, and in my opinion, mm-hmm. according to the research I did, it's called the private prison sector okay uh because yeah. private prison means that uh, they need to they have business and i'm all with business you know real free enterprise but they are fascists because technically they are union between corporations and the state that's what it is so bottom line though they still need customers like every business must do profit to get yeah. profit you need to get customers how you keep your 90 percent or more occupancy full guess what you gotta fill up with uh, your prisons with more and more people that really they didn't do any crime I mean, as you said, now for leader, just because you drop a little piece of uh, trash on the at the airport in Phoenix, well, 
I believe you. I mean, I, I will do research, but my gosh, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. It's true. I, I know that you're not lying. People now can be charged criminally. Uh, you, you're just going jaywalking. Guess what? They will charge you for jaywalking. Nobody got hurt. Doesn't matter. I mean, you, 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 you don't look at them right. You know, maybe you just have a little bit of, you know, I don't know, sometimes you can be stressed out. You can be a little tired. You don't bow down fast enough when they talk to you. They're going to probably charge you for, I don't know, disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. Well, well they beat you up. Yeah. Seriously. That's, I saw videos. Yeah. They, they beat you up. They say, I'm sorry, please stop. Hey, resisting arrest. And they beat you up double. I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to yes. be fine. This is real. So, no, that's exactly that's exactly what's happening. So this is uh, scary because, as I said, and by the way, uh, I didn't verify, but I read different articles. Maybe you know more about that. Seems like Attorney General Jeff Session is deeply involved with the privacy prison system uh, as some sort of a personal he interest. Is. is it true? Yes, as far as I can tell, I haven't done a huge amount of research on this, but yes, as far as I can tell, he is. Um, and this is the main, you know, this is a big issue that we have in Arizona. I don't know if you're aware of this, but we have a 55% higher incarceration rate than um, than the average. Um, for and and a large percentage of that is people that are being in that are being uh, in jail for victimless acts. Um, victimless acts are things simply just like smoking marijuana um, or being in possession of marijuana. Um, these are things that we shouldn't that, that it doesn't make sense to put people in jail for these things. And if you look at what Portugal did, they decriminalized this uh, drug drug conviction and instead transitioned those people to be rehabilitated because usually people that are on drugs have something that's hurting them that they need to get over so that they can then get off the drugs because the drugs are just a symptom. They're just a coping mechanism. Um, instead, um, like what I experienced when I went to just the booking process of jail, mm -hmm. it is entirely set up to dehumanize the person, to invalidate you and to make you feel like you are completely worthless. And, and I know that there's a large amount of people out there that think that's a great way to teach someone a lesson, but it's not because these people are already typically the most of the people in there already feel bad about themselves. They are their own worst enemy when it comes to um, having a having confidence or self-image or anything and by putting them in there you're reinforcing those very thoughts that causes them to then act out in ways that are adversary to having a civilized society so you're making it worse and it just creates this prison pipeline where people just go to prison over and over and over again rather than creating productive citizens that are productive taxpayers that are adding value to our communities and helping to keep everyone safe um, we are creating our own problems, essentially, with the process we have. And also another thing, you know, I mean, I go even to the basics. Before even we go there, and I agree with you, by the way. That's, I mean, if you have a drug problem, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not even a criminal problem. If you, because unless you steal, unless you do something that, you know, infringes on somebody else's right, if you just, you know, get this mesh with whatever drug you want, at the point you have a personal problem that I don't think jail is going to fix at all. It's going to make it worse. But before even we yeah. go there... Before even we go there, look at, let's go back to the Bill of Rights, to our foundation. And all these politicians, that supposedly they take an oath to uphold the Bill of Rights in the Constitution. They should be looking at themselves and really jump in the lake because they're a bunch of traitors. Sixth Amendment. This is coming from a guy that was even born here. He has a poor English, poor grammar, but I can still read a little bit. The Sixth Amendment pretty much said that they, we're all innocent until proven guilty. That's the way it should be. That's the bottom line. I mean... Uh, instead, now, with this system, even when you go booked in jail, let's say you get booked, you're still innocent. You didn't still face your trial or your day in court. They treat you like you're a criminal all the way. They put you probably among mm -hmm. criminals. And that's, I don't think that's right. Because I should never be put, you know, in a situation that uh, uh, still I've been proven guilty. I shouldn't be treated like an animal. And I don't say even criminals should be treated like animals, but because still, for sure, I shouldn't be at the same level of humiliation and human condition that is not right. I'm a still innocent. What if tomorrow they say, oh, by the way, sorry, you were innocent. I mean, why they put, you know, fingers in your butt and do other things that I have no idea because I never had that experience. Thank God. And hopefully I'm never going to go to there. By the way, can you tell me something about it? What do they do to you when they book you? I'm just cool. You don't have to answer, of course. How does it work? Sure. When they book you, yeah. So it's actually a pretty, there's several times in the process that they violate your Fourth Amendment rights. 
Um, I can't answer for the men's side, but I can answer for the women's side of what I went through. And by the way, when I did this protest, I had already filed the committee paperwork that I was running for governor, yeah. but I specifically did not include that in the press release, nor did I tell anyone yeah. um, as I was going through the booking process because I wanted to see what really is happening in the jail. Mm-hmm. So when I went through the booking process, um, they take you to three different locations, and each one is progressively worse. The first one, um, the officers were followed the law. They were very um, appropriate and very kind in the way they behaved. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was Officer Lentz, and I have to give him props for that. But yeah. after that, it got bad. Um, in the third one, the Fourth Avenue Jail, that's the worst. Um, they forced uh, they forced all of the women to give uh, to give a urine sample, and they say they need to do that to show to determine if you're pregnant or not. Well, the woman that was with me is a grandmother, well past the age of being able to be pregnant. And I said, and I specifically refused and said, you don't have a right to know that about me. And I can assure you I'm not pregnant and I will sign any paperwork holding you harmless yeah. of, of any type of damage that could happen if I was. Yeah. And they said, no, if you don't. And they put you in a room that's covered in urine oh. and covered in feces. Gee. And the windows are totally open on it. And they have the male prisoners walk by you. And they and the male prisoners can see all the women in there covered in the room with covered in urine and feces, oh my God. and watch the women trying to get the urine sample. Oh my God! I mean, that's just so. They tough. also have a camera straight at you, looking at your um, strategically placed, looking at your private parts as you use the bathroom. Oh and gosh. then they have the male officers come in right when you're about to give the sample, and they come in and they like basically like give you a look and mock you and then leave. Oh my God! This is—I think this is—you uh, know, no, I think this is uh, disgusting all the way. I mean, if I, if I if I heard that, I say, okay, you were in Korea, North Korea, or China? Where did you go? This is freaking what Maricopa County? Where you were in in uh, Phoenix? Where yeah. Is? Yep, the Sheriff Fourth Avenue Jail. Oh my God! This is MCSO Fourth Avenue Jail. United States. This is of, the booking process. United States of America, Arizona, and uh, as I said, first of all, you're still innocent. You shouldn't be treated like a criminal. Number one. Number two, you know, you need to have some at least hygiene. Talking about diseases spreading around, talking about basic u- human conditions. I mean, I wouldn't trick my dogs in a situation like that. Okay, give a little more dignity. Yeah. Seriously, at least you know, yep. don't, don't let them be between, as you said, fishes and pee. Mm-hmm. And more important, you know, uh, you should have at least the women taking care of women. You can have guys start to staring at you. Anyway, this is really sad. I have no idea, honestly. But as I said, we are facing, yep. this is not it happened just today. This has been a long process that our system, our constitution is being completely, uh, let's say, bypassed, at least ignored. And as I said to all my friends, that they call themselves conservatives. And I said, oh, we got to find, after all, an happy uh, medium. After all, we are not living in a utopistic society. I say, guys, I don't need to live in a utopistic society. All we say, let's live to what's supposed to be a republic. I don't ask for crazy things. We have a bill of rights. All these conservatives, Republicans, whatever, they think, oh, we love the Constitution. We love the Constitution. They guess what? How many things, how many Bill of Rights we violated? How many of our rights announced in our Constitution? Let's stick with the Sixth Amendment just because. I mean, the point is nobody should be charged, or at least nobody should be considered guilty until proven. I mean, we should be proven. I'm confused. But the point is we are innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> I'm, I'm fuming. I'm fuming. No, yes, it's, absolutely. That's the now, bottom line. The interesting thing, yeah, the interesting things on it is when you were talking about that this seems like it's, um, like you don't want to read into conspiracy. Um, and I don't like reading into conspiracies either. But at the same time that Jeff Sessions is launching this program uh, to steal our stuff and launching a program to double down on um, going after people that use marijuana, the Senate has also just passed a bill that um, requires people, requires citizens to report their privately stashed cash and wow. any other assets that are not in bank. Gee, question. Did the president uh, already sign this? Is it already law of the land? No, this is not law of the land. It simply passed the Senate, Senate Bill 1241. Wow. Um, but when you take all of these things into consideration, yeah. Um, why does the Senate, why, how does the Senate, how, how does the government have any right mm-hmm. to require us to report all of our assets to them? Yeah. I mean, that's they exactly don't. what they want. The point is that they want a cashless society. That was part of a plan, 
uh, learned a long time ago. And the idea, because they want to control everything we have, because at the end they can take everything they have. If people are so concerned about gun registration, I'm all for it, especially the conservatives, Republicans, that they think, oh, no, no, gun confiscation, gun registration, I agree. The same story with your cash. It's your money. Government should have no rights to know well, what you have. In some states, as guns are considered assets. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's so, part of your asset. Civil asset forfeiture does seize guns. Yeah. So this would be a fantastic program to get a gun registry under the guise of trying to combat money laundering. Wow. Um, as well as then whenever they go, they could then target people. You know, I mean, the police have the technology now where they are reading licenses as you drive by. So they could just have the system target a specific group of licenses based on what assets you've reported and then pull you over for anything they want, um, including just saying you look like you were tired or I just wanted to make sure you were okay, yeah. which they do, and then and then proceed to just use it as a way to steal your stuff. Wow. Wow. This is, I don't, and I wish I could say that these are extreme ideas that the government would never do that, but unfortunately... This is happening in Arizona today. No, and this is happening right now all over the states. Arizona, of course, uh, it probably would be one extreme case, but I tell you, it's happening everywhere. It's uh, California, it's Oregon. It I mean, they're getting crazy everywhere. It's part of a global plan. As I said before at the beginning, this is not just uh, uh, us Americans uh, facing this reality, or Arizona, or so, you know, California. This is uh, everywhere all over the states and the world. It's part of a global tyranny. In Italy, for example, right now, just to give you an idea, you cannot take any more out of your bank account more of a certain amount of cash for a day. I think no more than $1,000 uh, or something like that. Think about yes. it. It's supposed to be your money. No, not really. Did they tell you how much? And why not 800 bucks a day? What if you need more? They want a cashless society so they can pretty much control everything we do, track everything we do. And, you know, for me at this point, the most important thing, you know, I was the first one to bash for eight years Obama, and I have no regrets. And, of course, I, I would do it again. I still do it. But I'm also the first right now to bash Trump, President Trump, if he doesn't do the right things, uh, the right thing and the right things. Okay? And I hope all the rest of Americans who voted for him stop completely idealizing their own virtual reality just because they dream of somebody, as I said before, dressed as Captain America, and just because they think somebody must be good. Because Obama was bad, now Trump must be great. Guys, we've been duped from both, by both parties. That's the reality. Now, I'm not saying that Trump is as bad as Obama on some issues, but guess what? So far, it's pretty bad. Because if you tell me, let happen. First of all, just with two topics. I'm not even going to other things. Uh, the fact that now we're all guilty until proven innocent, and they can take your stuff, as you're saying, without having been connected to any crime, and they reinforce this uh, completely unconstitutional law right now, and they have a problem to completely prosecute anybody just because you may be associated to a little bit of a leaf of a plant. They can take your property. I mean, let's not forget, happens already in California, Malibu, a few years ago, a man had a beautiful 20 acres in the beautiful Malibu canyons, and there was... They came with the DA, the National Guard, and they killed the man, by the way, just because there were some plants in the middle of his property. He was not even aware, by the way. You know, seeds can fly. Then you have marijuana plants. Mm -hmm. Let's say somebody plants a little seed of marijuana on your property. They have the excuse to come there, knock you down, raid you, and eventually kill you, like this man happened, and then they take your property. I mean, that's part of what is called civil assets for features. Am I right or wrong? Yes. Yeah. So this, yes, absolutely. And and the thing is, is that, and, and I'm glad you brought up that point because, you know, we, these are not very, these are not just, they're not going after like the big drug dealers in this. They're going after people like you and me. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're, they put these laws in place so that they can start off with some very simple thing of a police just doing his job. And, um, you know, I would compare it in my job. I work for a technology company and I do account management and part of that is sales. It would be like my company saying, Marissa, we're going to give you this big, huge bonus every single time you screw our customers over. Yeah. Every time you steal from our customers, we're going to incentivize you for that. Yeah. That would be, that, a company like that would go out of business immediately. Their employees would probably quit. But that's exactly what this program is with our police. It's incentivizing them to steal from us. Yeah. And so 
I want to be the first person to stand up and support our police, but I can't when their job that we've designed for them is to steal stuff from innocent people oh, and is, to uh... cage people for victimless acts. And that's what we've done. We've taken the police from being in charge of protecting us to being in charge of beating innocent citizens, taking their stuff, and putting them in cages yeah. for victimless acts. And that's completely backwards from what our Constitution states it's supposed to be. Exactly. And this is, as I said, this is not a party issue. You know, uh, this is about if we are free society or if we are living under tyranny. You know what is bad? Sometimes I almost say, you know what? Uh, it is an illusion. And people still thinking that we are free. I write to say, you know what? Let's admit it. We are not free anymore. We are slaves. And the point is, masters can decide now, instead of being under really the rule of law, we are under the rule of fascism and the rule of enforcers. Because let's say today you get pulled by the police, okay? You're driving maybe three miles uh, above the speed limit, whatever, any excuse. It says it's on the air discretion of the agent to destroy your life or to let you live. That's the definition of tyranny. When you have no more rule of law, but you are pretty much enforcement by a man. That's the bottom line. I mean, now at this point, we have a human being with a badge who will decide if he wants to ruin your life or will let you go. That's terrible. That should never happen to America. I mean, I understand it is happening in parts of Europe, or most of Europe anyway. In Italy, that's what they could do. Uh, and more important, like Korea, China, things like that. But happening here, and then you still think, you know, you go out and God bless America and land of the free home of the brave. What type of drugs are you really drinking? I mean, what type of Kool-Aid? I mean, I'm not trying to put American down, but I said, let's admit it. We lost that. We are living in complete fascism. Yeah. The only reason now, because you didn't get touched yet, the reason why the, your door didn't get break down means that it's not happening. The only fact that maybe your child didn't get stolen by the state doesn't mean that it's not happening. But let me play this little short video. This is from uh, a real news. I mean, real news. They're all news. Of course, they're all fake, but also these are facts. There is a person who sued the state <laughs> and won. But let me play this, talking about uh, now you can be arrested for a DUI, even if you're sober. How do you like that? You still would like to, you know, bend over and kiss their butts just because they're wearing a badge or just because it's the government. Let me play this, and then we'll decide how it would work for you, listener, that maybe you disagree with me. I'm really curious. Driving arrests are down sharply after decades of aggressive enforcement, while drugged, drugged driving arrests are actually climbing. Georgia now has more than 250 officers with special drug recognition expert training, but 11 Alive Chief Investigator Brendan Keefe discovered some drivers are getting arrested for driving stoned, even when their drug test came back clean. You haven't had anything to drink tonight? Not tonight, no. Not tonight? Okay. One of the things that we do is we ask people to both do this thing, okay? Caitlin Ebner crossed the line and got pulled over on her way home from work. Well, real hard. I'm going to ask you to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You can stop. No, she wasn't drinking. All tests for alcohol came up empty. When's the last time you smoked marijuana? Oh, I don't do that. You, I can give you a drug test right now. I've, you you, you I've, don't smoke marijuana? I do not. Okay. No. All right. Well, you're showing me indicators that you have been smoking marijuana. Okay. I didn't realize that you could get arrested for something that you didn't do until it happened to me. Right. Watch your wrist for me. I don't oh, want to pinch you. you some marijuana? No, ma'am. Not possession unless I find it in your car. I believe that you're impaired by the marijuana that you've smoked. Before you felt those handcuffs closing over your wrist, did you understand just how serious this was? I didn't understand. I, um, as soon as I took that breathalyzer, I thought I was going home. It's time you've been taken in custody, okay, for DUI drugs. The waitress spent the night in jail and had her alcohol server's permit revoked because of the DUI arrest. After four months, prosecutors dismissed all charges because her blood test came back completely clean. You had to spend months and thousands of dollars proving your innocence. I did. When's the last time you smoked weed? I don't know. You don't smoke weed? No, not at all. The same thing happened to this college student two weeks earlier on Good Friday. Well, I believe you have, okay? I need to borrow your arm real quick, okay? I believe that's why I believe that's why you were failing to maintain your lane and driving halfway wait, wait, on, on the ramp when I was behind no, you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Give me just one second. On, Give me just one second. Arresting me. That's correct. 
I didn't understand. I'm like, why are you arresting me? Like, what did I do? He said, do you I have a substance? I'm like, what? Are you arrested because you think I smoke marijuana? I believe I mean, you're impaired by cannabis. Yes, ma'am. Sir, sir, I don't smoke weed. Is there a way you can test me right now? Princess Umbamara was also jailed and fought the DUI drug charges for half of 2016. So the blood test comes back, they toss the case. I remember my lawyer trying to talk about a deal. I was like, what? I'm not taking a deal. I didn't do anything. I want, like, my life back. Can you reverse time? Can you stick your tongue out real big? Months later, it happened a third time to this Auburn student. You're giving me indicators that you have consumed marijuana, so you're being placed under arrest for DUI, okay? The prosecutor filed this dismissal of the student's DUI drug charge five months later. Defendant performed well on field sobriety evaluations, and blood and urine were negative. Three DUI drug arrests, three tox screens negative for marijuana. One police officer, Cobb County's T.T. Carroll. Documents show Carroll is one of the highest rated and best trained officers on Cobb County's legendary DUI task force. Well, you're showing me numerous indicators. He's a certified drug recognition expert. Well, I don't believe you're telling me the truth, okay? I don't believe because I'm seeing some involuntary indicators that you've consumed marijuana. One of 250 Georgia officers who've gone... Okay, something happened. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm freaking out. I mean, seriously, I had to stop because I was uh, getting uh, anxiety and, uh, you know, my... Heart rate went to 150, probably. I mean, this is insane. I mean, what do you think about this? I mean, this guy can put make up everything he wants just because he has a badge. Say, you know what? Yeah, there is no marijuana in you. You, you have nothing in your blood. But guess what? Just because I say so, just because maybe I can tell you that you were going three miles further or faster or whatever, any excuse, I ruin your life. This is real. I mean, it wasn't. By the way, they all they all names. They are public cases. What do you think about this? You know, Zana, this is this is exactly what I'm talking about. These laws are put in place, and, and people think, well, these are only going to go after horrible people. No, they are there to go after us. They are there to um, put the police in a situation where they are encouraged and and even um, financially incentivized to come. What it comes down to is really destroying lives of productive people, of the working class, and. Um, we need to change this. We need to stop this. It's, it's unbelievable how fast the government has put themselves in a position to have so much power um, over things that really can make or break someone's life. This is really you can't come back from stuff like this. You no. just can't. It's, it's impossible to rebuild for most people. Um, and we basically uh, put them into an, a situation where we've institutionalized poverty um, once they go through this process, it, it's not okay. We need to stop it. Mm. It's immoral. Well, let's talk about solutions because, you know, as I said, uh, the first way you fix the problem, you must admit you have a problem. And you don't live anymore in this sort yes. of utopistic reality. And, you know, because as they said, at the end of the day, you can ignore reality, but will not be able to ignore the consequences of reality. And that's happening. It's already here. Okay, so what can we do in Arizona? I'm talking about right now, of course, for people in Arizona, because I live in Arizona, and uh, I realize that uh, we could do a lot if we had uh, even just uh, some of our legislators aware and not part of the machine, because as I say, every time I see now one of our legislators uh, being supported or lobbied by the private prison system, uh, that gives me really uh, some sort of a ring of alarm, because I understand Unfortunately, if you get paid by these lobbies, their goal is to make more customers for the industry, in this case, the private prison. So I have a problem with that. What exactly are you running for and what, that, what people can do to help you out? Sure. Well, I'm running for ga- governor of Arizona um, for the Libertarian Party. And the, one of my primary issues that I've been talking about and focusing on is the, is the issue of criminalizing victimless acts and also stealing our stuff. And, and we need to start supporting politicians that are going to actually take a stand for the Constitution, take a stand for liberty and human rights and civil rights, and end these disastrous programs. The only thing they have done is created a prison to pipe, uh, a, a pipeline to prison, and, and 
allow the government to take our stuff, and that's not okay. No. Um, so for one thing, one of the campaigns that I'm doing, I'm not sure if people are aware of this, but when they take our stuff um, and they and they put us in jail or they give us traffic tickets or speeding tickets or whatever, uh, 10% of that money goes towards the Clean Election Fund. So the Clean Election Fund, um, which is what most candidates for office um, at all levels of office run on, um, is basically incentivizing politicians to then keep having these laws go into place that criminalize victimless acts and steal your stuff. So one thing is is to boycott clean money. And so what I've been asking people to do is to do, instead of donating the $5 to the clean money fund when they register to vote, like what they're requested, instead donate $5 to my campaign and any other um, people that are running for office on these type of platforms. Yeah. Um, and that is, and the reason why is because voices are heard during the election cycle. If you don't vote, no one hears your voice. Yeah. Um, and so what, what the establishment looks at is how, who, which candidates are getting small dollar donations from the people, not from lobbyist groups, not from dark money, but from people. And, and that's important. And so if we have a situation where we have any candidates that are getting like, five dollars from five thousand people that will send the strongest message to the establishment that we have to stop yes what we're doing what is your um, website? another thing that people sorry go ahead what is your website again please your website my website is marissa hamilton.com it's spelled m-e-r-i-s-s-a okay. um and another thing that people can do along with that is at the same time i would encourage you to write your legislators Write your, um, write the president and write the attorney general and let them know that these programs are not okay. They must end and they must back off from them. Um, and then finally, carry a card with you. So I have a couple of attorneys that I keep on hand. Um, and on the back of their cards, they have something that says notice to law enforcement officers. And it basically says that you're requesting the right to be, right, being silent and you're refusing to be searched. Yeah. This is extremely important. Because the reason why the officers are able to do this is because they talk people into letting them be searched. Um, in the video that you stated, that you showed, I, if I recall correctly, they, the person immediately was like, I'll take a drug test right now. I'm not guilty of anything. I'll take a drug test right now. Um, don't do that. When you do things like that, that's, that's you giving up your rights. And if we give up our rights that easily, that gives permission for the state to then create all these crazy laws. Start standing on your rights. Um, for example, for the arrest for the protest, um, they charged me with a, with um, obstructing a road, which I was not doing. Mm. Um, if anything, the only thing that I was doing was not following the officer's um, order, which was to end the protest because we had already they had already set up for us to have this protest, and they just didn't like who was talking. I'm fighting that. I'm fighting that in court, and the reason why is because most. Most of the time that they um, do these charges, it's because most people will plea out. When you plea out, that's basically then um, telling the court, the justice system, to keep doing this because they're never going to have to be held responsible for targeting innocent people. Wow. This is really a new level. I mean, I already knew some of this stuff, but now I see it more and more really close to us every day. And there is a point that if we don't do something now, and this is already bad. It's not like it's it's going to happen. It's happening. But think about, visualize this maybe in 10 years, 15 years from now, if we let this completely spread out like a cancer, what's going to happen to our new generation of Americans and, and uh, you know, sons and daughters? I mean, this is going to be like living in like a 1984 on steroids uh, movie, a horror movie. That's why I say it's something yep. we have to address right now. This is not like, and people, this is not about politics. When people say, I talk sometimes to some friends, oh, I'm not into politics. This is not about politics. Politics is not like an abstract concept. This is about if you live as a free man or if you're a complete slave, always living in fear, that something can happen to you even if you've done nothing. I understand some of you say, oh, I'm going to always say, yes, sir. That's fine. That's your choice. But the point doesn't matter. Even if you say, yes, sir, they will still take your stuff. And they will still put a finger in your butt once you go to jail. That's for sure. Even if you've done nothing wrong. Okay? I mean, there is a yes, guy. Yes, absolutely. And then the money that they use to do all those things to you, they're going to use to elect a whole other crop of politicians. They're going to create more tyrannical laws and take more of your stuff. Yeah. So we clean money is the dirtiest. We have got to stop that. 
Um, we have to stand up against what the AG is trying to do and stand up against Trump, regardless of whether you voted for him or not. And then when it comes down to you, you need to protect and defend your Fourth Amendment rights when you are stopped by the police. It's not about being disrespectful. It's simply about just say, it's simply saying I put the Constitution um, above everything. I put the Constitution and my my right above the all the stupid laws that have been being that are being written to take my stuff. Yeah. All right. Listen, uh, what I say, thank you for being on the show. More important, thank you for speaking up. Because as I said, this is uh, we need as many people as possible to articulate, to explain from every party. I mean, I wish people in the Democratic Party would stand up and say this. I wish people in the Republican Party, they would do the same. And uh, this is not a party issue, as I said. This is going to be a really something bad, so bad that you have no idea till it happens. But we should have an idea because we should see right now. I have another thing. I have no time probably to play. I, maybe I'll play later after I let you go. I mean, there is a Nevada guy, Nevada cop, excuse me, uh, stopping a, a man driving that he was driving just three miles above the speed limits. And the guy, he had some cash with him. And he, on video, I'm going to get your cash. This guy completely law-abiding person, never regular crime. You have to, I will play the audio. I will play the audio after I let you go. Unless you want to stay with me the last few minutes, it's up to you. I need to play this because I need to try to reinforce this concept. What's happening right now, this is not in like just some crazy cops out there. This is unfortunately, it's the law and they will abuse it and use it every time they need it. Let me play this. You want to stay with me two more minutes? Yeah, I can stay with you for a couple more minutes. Yeah, let me play this. This is scary. I thought the work was easy to find sound is like a police, like, like a peace officer, law enforcement, uh, enforcing the laws, or just maybe some sort of a, a robber on the high sea, try to also bring high arrest and intimidation. I mean, the bottom line, they, it's cutting a deal here, like almost like a negotiation between gang members. I'll let you have the car, I'll let you have the cashier check, but I get $50,000. Is this scary? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is really happened. By the way, um, the, the, the man that would consent the search, then after I hired an attorney, and he won, he got his money back, 
and also the police department or the sheriff in case department of this uh, county. It's Nye County in, in, in uh, let's see exactly, the, the, the place in Nevada. Anyway, they had to put also play, pay, excuse me, uh, legal fees, $10,000. So this is not like a conspiracy or some made-up video. This is real case. It's on the news. It's a fact. And this is scary. As I said, it can happen to any one of us. It's on video. Just put on uh, YouTube, Las Vegas driver arrested, $50,000 civil asset forfeiture. That's it. Let's re exactly confirm all the things that we've been talking the last hour with uh, Marisa Hamilton. Marisa, I'll, I'll let you close. Uh, you got 60 seconds, whatever you want to say. Sure. Um, I that I'm so thankful for you presenting these videos and, and letting us talk about this because it's this is a serious issue that we need to wake up to. Um, it is time to just take our cognitive distance classes off and recognize exactly what's going on because otherwise liberty will be completely lost. We are well past the point of, um, of tyranny at this point. Um, if people want to find out more about me, you can go to marissahamilton.com. That's M-E-R-I-S-S-A. Um, you can also find me on Facebook. I've been doing videos um, almost daily about this topic because it's something I'm so passionate about. Um, and again, please boycott clean money. Clean money is the dirtiest, and it is a way for the pol for the government to then bring in a whole new batch of politicians that are going to then be incentivized to take your stuff. Yeah. We need to take our police departments and restore them back to um, fighting crime and not being used as like the big mafia to steal our stuff and cage innocent people. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm asking people to donate five dollars um, to my to my fund, uh, my campaign fund instead of clean money. Um, and also, please look out for other um, people that are campaigning that are really working hard to fight for the rights of, of our citizens and stand up for the Constitution. Yeah, and I say normally I don't. Uh really bring my personal preferences uh, on uh, voting for people because I always say, you know, use your brain and I still tell you that. But let me tell you for sure, so far I didn't find anybody in the other two parties that make this sense and anybody that really changes what, you know, it doesn't matter if it's Repo Republican or Democrat, they've been doing the same agenda. When it comes down to freedom, we all screw. So as I say, open your mind, guys, and it's time really to say, you know what, after all, it's up to us. And uh, this is the last chance we have. I really believe it. Marisa, thank you very much. Please keep me posted also how it goes with your court case, okay? Yes, I will keep you posted on that. Um, hopefully the um, government will wise up and stop fighting against me on this. But if not, I will stand up for our First Amendment rights no matter what the cost. All right, very good. All right, guys, uh, don't go away. Uh, this is Luca Zana. By the way, the final hour, I have a very, dis you know, very sad uh, but also inspiring interview with a friend, a friend that is dying. He has a few months left. His name is Dennis from Phoenix, Arizona. He's been an advocate for uh, legalization or decriminalization of marijuana. As you know, I don't even smoke that plant. I don't even like it. But this is about freedom. And it's also about now more important of a human being who's living this planet. And maybe he has a chance. And I would like to share this chance with you. This is going to be the hour about love, the, the final hour. Meanwhile, ready for hour number two is going to be about guns training. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We'll look at Zanet. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Lucas Zanna on United States FM Network. Awaken the warrior in you with Scotty, the new AR-15 rifle by Summer Enterprises, LLC. I am Scotty. More Scott is a winter, hunting, and just revenge. I am Scotty. I am chambered in 223 wild and can shoot 556 NATO and 223 Remington. My trigger is crisp and fast, an average of four pounds out of the box. Call me a fast girl. I can shoot over five rounds in one second, but I'm focused too. With only iron sights and no bench, I can hit one square inch at 25 yards. I bow down to no one. I'm independent. I am fierce. I am a warrior. I am Scotty. The new AR-15 rifle by Summer Enterprises, LLC. Find me at www.ar15shop.us. There we go, guys and girls. You're listening to Love Guns and Freedom. We'll look at Zan. Uh, this is the second hour, the hour about guns. Well, I had an excitement, uh, an exciting um, Saturday, 
last Saturday. You know, last Sunday I wasn't around because I was busy. Yes, I was busy. I didn't want to stress out too much. I'm doing pretty much more than I can sometimes. But we've been very busy Saturday doing a, a photo operations, operation, photo shootout. Is that right? I guess so. We didn't shoot in each other, but we were taking photos for the new Scuddy rifle and also Don't Tread on Us with a model from Havasu, Hana, that I also had on my show a couple of weeks ago. Now, the beautiful thing about uh, the day was great. You know, it was, uh, was hot, but not too hot. I had my friend Charles Black uh, coming back from Alaska. He was doing there some uh, videos and some, you know, easy time there, relaxing a little bit. But, you know, even it wasn't that hot. It was still 100 degrees. <laughs> That's for us. is normal. But, uh, you know, it was kind of an interesting day. Let me tell you a little bit heads up. First of all, we had incredible uh, photo shooting. It was really good. Uh, the photo, they are great. I will post them soon on uh, ar15shop.us. We were featuring uh, mostly, of course, Don't Trade on Us, the Freedom Rifle, and also the new SCADI, or SCADI by Zan Enterprises, with Anna. Anna is a great professional, I'm telling you. Uh, it wasn't exactly, this is like, uh, you know, the catwalk in Paris, okay? And this is like, we're in the middle of the desert. With 100 degrees, we had a beautiful Zana truck. You know, my truck box was some sort of a place for operations to change clothing, but still was desert. And uh, we worked a few hours, okay? So much that at the end, Charles was kind of, uh, you know, passing out but because the heat uh, is no use. It was about for a couple of weeks was in, in Alaska, so it was kind of a cultural shock coming back uh, to, this, uh, to this weather. But beside that, you know, we had a great job. The photos are going to be great. They're great. You can see them pretty soon, as I said, on AR15shop.us. The only thing I want to tell you, though, a little problem with the ammunition. Because we were trying to also do some video shooting. And, uh, by the way, I had Zach, my friend Zach, that uh, he came all the way from uh, um, Boulder City, Nevada. Okay? And I'm going to have him back again. Because uh, we were doing also at the end some shooting with the rifles, me and Zach dressed as Vikings, or at least Viking style, uh, had to have a little fun to do the final f videos to add to this uh, uh, SCADI commercial. Well, let me explain the story, because this is something important that I think you should know. I bought uh, this ammunition on Natchez.com. That is a good company, by the way. It's not their fault. I call Independence, okay? Uh, Independence by a Federal, for what I understand. Uh, I bought a thousand round, and uh, they were a good price. Free shipping, two hundred ninety nine dollars. Say, wow, looks like a good good brass five five six NATO. I thought it would be nice to shoot them with SCADI and don't trade on us. Normally, as you know, uh, with my two twenty three wild chamber, that that's the the chambers on most of my rifles, I can shoot both five five six and also two twenty three Remington. Uh, and I can shoot 556 five, very nice, don't get me wrong, extremely nice. But the point is, I never had any problem. I've been shooting thousands of rounds out of my rifles and never had a problem. Uh, out of the blue, you know, that was kind of shocking. You know? I go down, and of course I was uh, testing the rifle because I was going to hand it to Hannah for, to do some shooting also her for our videos. The first round on the Don't Trade On Us, I had a squib. I don't know if you're familiar with the squib, you should. It means that there is not enough powder, or maybe there is no powder at all in the uh, round, in the ammunition, in the cartridge. So the, the, you hear like a sort of a strange noise, like almost pss, and there is no much recoil. And what happens? You have a bullet stuck in the barrel. That's extremely dangerous situation. Why? Think about it. You shoot the first round, and you have pss, or some sort of a... You know, strange noise, no recoil. You, if you don't realize that you have a bullet stuck in the middle of the barrel, if you do not recognize what a squib is, guess what? what's going to happen? You may go start shooting the second round. And what happens with the second round? You're going to have a bullet stuck in the middle of the barrel, and the other bullet that is coming out of the uh, cartridge is going to pretty much uh, have a bad impact in the barrel, and you will have an explosion, and your barrel blow up, will blow up, and your face can be damaged, damaged, and of course many other things can happen. So, 
I said, wow, thank God nothing happened. Thank God I was the one managing the rifle. I understood immediately that there was a squeep. I cleared the squeep. And I said, wow, all these years I never had a squeep. The first thing I did, I started to look at the ammunition. I said, this is strange. You know, supposed to be good brand ammo. And let me tell you, normally I shoot uh, um, ammunition like uh, brown bear, Russians, steel case. Or I shoot wolf, steel case, also Russians. People say, what, you got a Russian connection? No, I'm trying to save, you know, when I, when I test the rifles, I want to test them with the ammunition that normally they're the most inexpensive. Because I know that the average shooter maybe doesn't have money to shoot much, uh, you know, good stuff in brass. So I want to go with this type of ammunition. If they, my rifles performs, perform with this type of ammunition, I know that then also brass and 5.56 five, is going to be great. So I said, let's uh, find out. But I never I had a problem. I never had a problem with the steel case, even with inferior ammunition. No, even a squib, and I've been shooting thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. So that's the point. That's the point. Uh, so I was kind of shocked when I found uh, that uh, this ammunition that I thought they were good, you know. I mean, think about it. Independence ammunition by federal, you think it's good stuff. 5.56 five, NATO, brass. You know, I mean, what the heck? What's going on? So, um, very, very sad, very sad, because I, I was able to somehow to take care of this uh, uh, first round, and I'm very glad. Now, let's talk about what happened next. So, I'm going to start to shoot more rounds with, uh, you know, for example, also my friend uh, Zach. And immediately, bang, the rifle was jamming. What was more important was the bolt was getting stuck, and I didn't understand. I said, what the heck? Never happened that before. I changed upper. I said, okay, I bring another upper. Let's see, maybe just an upper. And normally I never had the problem, but you know, you know, the Murphy's Law, everything is possible. So anyway, um, that's the point. Guess what? A second upper, three, four rounds, and bang, same story. Get stuck. That was frustrating. So they don't trade on our side to stop it. We understand it. Then we had the, the Scuddy, same story. Then I said, Zach, try your rifle. Bang, get stuck, not even after 10 rounds. I just was getting very frustrated. Top, think about it. It was, hot, was, hot, it was hot. It was hot. <laughs> and uh, we were trying to finish the photo shooting. So, you know what, maybe it's not the day. Somebody's telling us we're supposed not to shoot rifles today. That never happened before. Well, as the day was over, my first job was to figure it out what happened where the problem was with this sort of blockage, or with this sort of malfunction with the rifle. I couldn't believe it. Of course, the first thing that came to my mind must be the ammunition, because it's impossible that four rifles, all four rifles, not even after 10 rounds, they were having the same problem. So, independence ammunition, I found out online, on many boards, that they were all, at least, there is a lot, means like a, a, a production number, that uh, was having a serious problem, exactly the same problem, and uh, they had to be returned to factor to the factory. And there are also message boards out there that uh, you could see exactly the same situation I had. And why am I sharing this? Because I want to be sure, you know, I'm not trying to put it down any uh, munition, factory ammunition. So much that also before I called them, I wanted to be sure. I went to, to Plum Crazy uh, directly to the owner, at least one of the owners, you know, uh, Ed Mack, we went there, we opened the rifles. He also did a nice video, by the way. And he showed exactly what happened. There were parts of uh, primers. All the primers of this ammunition, they were somehow splattered and stuck in the bolts all around the, the chamber. They were like, uh, that's what was causing the problem. This primer was getting completely lost. Anyway, that's the point. So it was very frustrating to figure it out this one because, uh, as I said, it was a day of production pretty much gone. If I, had, if I had to do the video, thank God we were doing the photos and that was fine. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the problem was that it was also could have been very dangerous. And I'm not trying to take credit because, you know, I'm just uh, it's the time, you know, so I believe in the superior, you know, above uh, uh, pr providence, okay? 
but also a little training. I'm, I'm not the average shooter, and I was able to at least understand the problem with the with the, with the squib. That I hope I, and I explained to you well enough, because it's something very dangerous. But when you do, for example, a control pair, especially with the reset, the trigger reset, and you shoot pretty fast. Guess what happens? You know, maybe you don't have time to understand that there is a squib because you're shooting pretty much the second round immediately. So that could have been a disaster. And, of course, think about it. If I had to do a video shooting that day, shooting the rifle, that would have been a waste of day of production. Think about that. You know, we have to get uh, the cameraman and then, of course, the, the, uh, the model and everything else. So, but thank God, I will say, uh, well, it, we were good. Nobody got hurt. We found out the problem. And also, by the way, as I said, you know, I went online and when the Mr. Mac uh, of Plan Crazy posted the video, that, by the way, got more than 10,000 views already on Facebook, showing exactly the problem of this ammunition, independence. Uh, they w we found, of course, different uh, other message boards. One is the Carolina Shooters Club, and the other one is uh, ready.com. You can find it. Just Google, you know, independence, ammunition, uh, bad primers, or, you know, malfunctions. And, uh, and then, of course, on this board, you can see on this Facebook how many other people that uh, joined, uh, among those also many gun shops, had the same problem at to, to return this ammunition. So my goal here is to give you information, guys. You know, I would really hate to have uh, this information, and maybe I could help somebody else out there. So be sure, be sure, before you buy independence ammunition, that uh, you know that that lot is okay. And be sure that, uh, you know, I, I, honestly, I, I, right now I'm not in condition to buy independence ammunition. After what I tested, uh, you know, I don't know. And I read too many other problems with other companies, I mean, with other buyers, you know, so I don't know. It's up to you. I want to give you the heads up. Now, I will play a little uh, phone conversation. Why? Because this is on the open, okay? I call the factory, the manager. Of course, I call firstnatches.com. They're really nice. They told me, please call directly the factory because normally they manage all these problems. And they were okay. They told me they're going to send me an extra thousand round uh, and they came to pick up the replacement. Uh, only problem though, you know, you will see it in there during the conversation. It's kind of a little funny that uh, they were at the end of the story when they asked me what type of chamber you were using to shoot this ammo. And I said I was using 223 Wild that everybody knows, it's uh, even uh, Natchez confirms, but it's on the open, you can shoot completely safe 5.56 five, NATO at 223 Remington. So much that I've been shooting with the chambers, thousands of 5.56, five, never a problem. And as I said, when I saw, found out that there are many other people out there on the Internet having the same problem with independence, I realized that, unfortunately, this company need to take care of their problem, okay? Because, uh, as I said, it is not just... Uh, some bad rounds, that could be very much of a liability issue, could be a very dangerous situation, and also a frustrating day at the range. I mean, think about it. You want to go out there, you want to have fun, and you don't want to uh, waste your day thinking that, you know, just because you got the wrong ammo. That's very sad, okay? That's very sad. So that's what I'm saying. Now, um, after this phone call, I want to go back. We have a great information. We have, for example, the new CCW class coming in Havasu City with Against All Enemies gun shop in Havasu City. It's going to be September the 2nd and the 3rd is Saturday and Sunday. Limited seats. It's going to be amazing. We have, of course, also what I like, uh, you know, of Patrick, uh, the owner of Against All Enemies. He's not just a guy that I really like him. He's a hardworking guy. He works 7 to 7 every day. He goes during the weekend to gun shows. I mean, the guy is a donkey. He works more than I do. And normally, I'm a pretty donkey, okay? And uh, he likes what he does, and I like that because we like people doing things that we enjoy. But also, I tell you, he's also a former Marine, retired Marine, and we're going to also start very soon. We already have the curriculum done, new classes for AR-15 rifle for home defense. That's an incredible class that nobody really offers so far. And I think it's very important. It's very created, crafted just for the rifle for home defense. Okay? So anyway, now let's play this little conversation I had over the phone with the federal uh, company, the, 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 the factory manager here, whatever is this customer service manager. Just to let you know exactly what happened about the independence, because I like to share this on the open. And then we go back with more information. Also, I would like to share with you something that is going to be 
very important uh, about uh, safety issues when you have a child in the house, okay, as a gun owner. What is the best place to carry your gun? How to carry your gun? How to storage your gun? Let's do it because this is very important, okay? Do not go away. You're listening to Love Guns and Freedom. We'll look at Zan. After this little uh, uh, conversation phone, we go back. We come back here on the air. You're listening to Love Guns and Freedom. We'll look at Zan. Hello, hi, good morning. My name is Gianluca Zanna. What's your name, sir? My name is Joe. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm a gun manufacturer here in Arizona, Zanna Enterprises, LLC. And the reason why I called you, uh, because I had a problem with uh, one of your lot of independents, uh, 556, five, 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 that I bought from Natchez. Uh, I have the receipt, and I just called, by the way, the customer service. They told me to call you directly. To make sure it start, I bought a thousand round of your ammunition. I went to the range of the day to test some guns, and uh, the first round shot was a was a squib. So I say, oh, wow, I never had a squib in probably ten years, but everything can happen, I guess. So I, I thank God nothing happened because you know I'm a certified NRA instructor and also uh, range safety officer, so I know a little bit about the squibs, and I was able to stop immediately, and I didn't shoot a second round. I was able to clear it, and okay. I had three different guns with me that I normally shoot regularly without any problems, and I was going to test them for a video shooting. Uh, bottom line, all the after no even five, six rounds, each gun started to completely malfunction, and specifically the bolt was getting stuck halfway. I couldn't understand what happened. I decided to change uppers, I decided to change gun, and the same problem happened over and over. Then finally, I started to open the gun and say, what is over here, this is not a gun. I found pieces of uh, primers in uh, stuck between the bolts, between the chamber, I mean, between the gas tube. This primer pretty much get, get loose. Powder everywhere, of course. So I said, wow, this is very dangerous too. I had to stop and uh, come back finish my, you know, I couldn't finish even my really video shooting for testing these guns, and here I am. So, I talked to Natchez, I have an invoice number, they told me to call you, and that's what I did. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do you have the lot number off uh, from that ammunition? Yes. Or is it a thousand? Yes, I have right now in front of me one box that says the lot, and of course I still have the original two uh, boxes, you know, the cardboard boxes. But let me show you with this little lot that I have on the box here, if you want to. Yep. F, F, uh, Frank, C, a Charlie, at least let's go look, see. One, seven, B, I guess looks like B, or oh, eight, I don't know. Zero, zero, one, dash, one seven seven. FC one seven B zero zero one dash one seven seven or maybe seven eight one or the other one. Yep, one second here. And okay. fire very few of these rounds. You have approximately a thousand left. Oh, I have. Yeah, I, I stopped. You know, I shot probably I don't know maybe forty rounds. Uh, you know, because I was able to shoot on each box probably about three, four rounds, and then bang, the same problem, I mean, so I, I still have most of them, I mean, I just opened one of the 500, you know, uh, box, and I went through, I don't know, maybe three boxes, three little, you know, um, what is, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up that ammunition, yeah, all they need to do is package that up, yeah, package all 1,000 rounds up, yeah. Or, you know, what's left. Yeah. Um, and put it in a one cardboard box. Yeah. Add it, obviously, so it doesn't shift around a lot. I need you to write four letters on the outside of the package. Go ahead, sir. I'll do it. The letters are O, as in Oscar. R, as in Roger. M, as in Mike. Dash, D, as in dog. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, and that's all. You just write that on a couple sides of that box in, like, black sharpie. Okay. Full lettering? Yes. Um, what I'll do is um, I'll have UPS come right to your address. They'll have the label with them. They'll pick up the ammunition and take it with them. Okay. We'll put the label on it and everything. Yeah. Um, I need a physical address from you. Yes. Well, tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. 
West Supai S U P A I Drive Golden Valley Arizona eight six four one three. Yes, now the, the chamber, there was a 223 wild, uh, just to let you know, you can shoot of course 556 and 223, and I never had any problem with uh, any other type of ammunition. This is the first time. So they're all chambered in the wild chamber? Yes. Just an FYI, so it, it shouldn't, it still shouldn't blow, blow primer like it is. It shouldn't be any problem. It's not a, it's not a 556 chamber, so theoretically, yes, you can fire it out of it. Yeah. You recommend shooting. Yeah, but um, as I said, you know, I, when you start shooting I've five, been shooting. We're, we're going to take a look. We'll take the sample back, take a look at it. Yeah, I've been shooting five, five, six, and eight all day with the, uh, you know, other brand like PCM, things like that. Never a problem. And you can sh you can shoot other brands, but when a problem comes up, yeah. um, th this is not is not chambered correctly for five, five, six ammunition. So a problem doesn't happen until a problem happens. If that makes sense, I mean, it doesn't happen until it happens. Mm -hmm. It is not a five, five, six. I'm going to try to, you know, just to let, just to let you know, just to let you know, sir. Uh, I found out because you know I did a little research on a couple different message boards. One is Carolina Shooters Club, and I can send you the link if you want to. Uh, there are people that are having the same problem, more than one, with photos documented, and they're shooting 556 a chamber, okay? And there is a photo. Okay, and uh, they describe also the type of rifle that they're shooting, and they shoot the same type of problem that I had. Okay, uh, so just to let you know, I can, this, this is not just me with the 223 Wild. Uh, I really believe there is something deeper than that. As I said, no, I'm not. I don't. I don't necessarily, you know, on message board or whatever. You have to take it out there. And call it. I understand. Uh, I'm just talking around. People normally, you know, go out and and share information, you know, personal experiences, of course, uh, we don't have there. take this ammunition back, yeah. and we'll test it. Okay, let me know. Like, this, like I said, it still shouldn't blow, it shouldn't blow primers like this, so, no. but I'm saying, FYI in the future, we recommend, with our ammunition, 5.56 five, chamber, 5.56 five, ammo, 223 ammo, shoot whatever chamber you want, 223, 5.56 five, Wiley, 5.56 five, five, and 5.56, five, five, and we cover well, I'm going to. I can go to get a 556 five, chamber and test it again. It's just, you know, of course, with much care, because, uh, as I said, I, I don't think it's just that. But I will test it. If you want, I can go to the range and get 556 five, upper and test it. You know. Upper has nothing to do with it. It's the chamber, the barrel. And I understand. I understand. Chamber the barrel means the upper complete in 556. Five, That's what I meant, sir. Different chambers, though. They are different rounds. I don't care what people say in Mexican sports. We're an ammunition mm -hmm. manufacturer. We make ammunition for what we do. They are different rounds. So I understand. I'm going to call thing made right now to that address you just gave me. You said package up those rounds, put that code on the outside. They'll be there within 24 to 40 hours. They should be. We do three pickup attempts. So if you miss them, they'll leave a note on your door explaining when they'll be back. Okay. Okay, so I wait for the. I put the package outside the door. Yep, package up like I told you to. Put it outside the door. You people have the label, everything with them. You don't even have to be there. They'll just go okay. on and take it with them. All right. Like I said, once I get that ammunition received here, I'll get your new stuff ordered up right away. All right, very good. Question: wh wh Which where are you located? What's that? Yeah, where is your where is your headquarters? Where are you right now? Where are you located? I'm in Anoka, Minnesota. At the federal ammunition plant. Where? In Anoka, Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. All right, perfect. Okay, just curious to know where you're located. Yep. All right, all right. Thank you very much. Waiting for you, the UPS. All right, and I'm it's just an FYI. I'm sending you. I'm going to send you a similar round in two two three caliber. It's going to have a milk sack primer. Give me the same bullet, but it's going to be considered two two three. 
no, send, do me a favor, no, send me 556 because I have also chamber in 556 and I will stick with that as you said but uh, yeah, I bought a 556, please send me a 556 if you don't mind yes, I can do that. all right, thank all right. you, thank you, bye 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 all right. great, well, we'll see that's all I can say they say two, two, it really makes no sense in my humble opinion 223 uh, wild I never had any problem with uh, any 556 I shoot 556 all day long every brand it's the first time and people say okay don't believe everything you, you see on the internet that's fine but as I said I don't believe anything but I start to take in consideration things when I see for example Carolina Shooters Club primer falling out okay um, check it out then you go to um, the other one is uh, reddit.com and there is of course uh, you know primers popping out and jamming gun my gun is a PSA 556 with Melonite 17 barrel first trip to the range I shot Winchester 23 and more 223 through without a single malfunction probably 100 rounds then I purchased some of the independents 556 on sale from PSA first magazine my bolt got jumped forward and I had to bang on it to get it loose then it seemed to work it's fine so I kept going couple rounds later I had another jam and when I pop it out I saw the primer laying on top of the magazine I went inside and bought some Federal 223 from the range and fired all 20 rounds with no issues I decided to try another box of independence in case it was just a bad box I go through about 10 rounds before there were 6 malfunctions in a row a few of the bullets you could see a dent from the firing pin but they didn't go off then I had to go this is ridiculous I mean this guy you know is trying to say that now just because uh, uh, the 223 wild makes no sense 223 wild you can shoot 556 five, and there is more than one case people need to look around uh, I think it's a problem my opinion uh, as I said anyway we'll see what they do I'm sure they want to send me some ammo we'll see I'll keep you posted guys okay it is time Get your Arizona Concealed Carry Permit now with Arizona Concealed Carry Permit by Zanna Enterprises, LLC. Become a more responsible and educated gun owner. Carry legally concealed in 35 states. Carry permitted in restaurants where alcohol is served. Learn where and how you can legally carry a firearm in Arizona. Learn where you can use deadly force. Where can you display your gun or not for self-defense? Learn how to deal with law enforcement while carrying a firearm. Learn how to be aware of your surroundings and how to avoid a confrontation. Buy your gun without waiting for a background check. Get your Arizona concealed carry permit now. Go to www.azccw.us. Go to www.azccw.us. Free for single mothers and people with disabilities. Here we go, guys uh, and girls. You're listening to Love Guns and Freedom. We'll look at Zanna. This is the second hour, and this is the hour about guns. Now, uh, as I said before, write it down. September the 2nd and the 3rd, Saturday and Sunday, we will be, uh, I will be in Havasu with uh, Against All Enemies, Mr. Patrick. We will teach together CCW classes. We have two days. And uh, some of the already filled. Okay, we already have the first day; it's almost filled. So limited seats gonna be. It is not just the typical class. Okay, this is the you know right now. Let me tell you something. The standard of uh, the state of Arizona, the DPS, to somehow let you have the class, uh, the certificate that you pass the test. You know, there is not even a test anymore. Let's be clear uh, for the Arizona CCW carry concealed permit. It is almost ridiculous. You can get in an hour, they can give you classes. And really, at the end, you have a false sense of security. Yes, you will get your piece of plastic. Yes, you will get your concealed carry permit and you have all the benefits. But the point is, let's be fair here. You don't have the knowledge that I really believe you should have. More important, I don't pretend, you know, I, I don't have the ambition to tell you, you will learn everything that day. But at least I want to show you the things you do not know. Let me go just through, for example, the topics, the curriculum that you will learn when you come to our classes, you know, that I teach. Uh, first of all, the moral and ethical decision. decision. 
you must know if you are the person that can do that. Not everybody can do that. That's very important. Then, you know, according to the state and also federal laws, who can own a firearm? Are you really, you can, are you allowed to own a firearm? You know, you do all this class and maybe they, you find out that you can't. Uh, so that's very important. Then the benefits of obtaining an Arizona CCW. I mean, why you, do you even need it? After all, technically, we have constitutional carry. You can carry in Arizona, in Arizona a concealed a gun or weapon without permits. Why do you need it? There are a lot of benefits, but do you know it? More important, we go to basic firearm safety. That is not basic at all. I will go way beyond the basic. I want to be sure that the first thing we want to know there that we are no liability, but we are safe. Then, of course, marks and ship fundamentals. People say, really, I don't need them. You know, after all, I am not uh, shooting. Uh, you know, guess what? You're right. You don't need to shoot during this class. There is no any type of shooting test. But at the end of the day, you know that uh, you want to be at least able to understand what you don't know. Because when you are on the street, it is not like when you are at the range. Let's say you, you miss at the range. Okay, you look bad with your friends or your ego. Understandable. But when you are at the, at, at, in the street, you miss... You can become a liability. You can somehow hit an innocent. And that's, uh, and that's very important. That's very important, you know. That's the bottom line. You cannot afford one mistake. So you need to know how to shoot straight. How do you do that? You must know marksmanship fundamentals. The three secrets. And I'll share them with you. And we also will try. I have also laser guns, for example, the search gun. And different other tools. At least we can go through the basics that you should know, and then, of course, develop with further training. Now, point six, mindset and attitude. You know what? You are the weapon. I know NRA says never use the word weapon. I am NRA certified instructor, but I'm not teaching NRA classes. So I tell you, you are the weapon. I don't care if you have a $3,000 Kimber handgun or any other thing, fancy gun, and maybe you may have just, you know, I don't know, a beat up old uh, gun that really is worth a hundred bucks. By the end of the day, you make the difference. Yes, of course, better gun, better training, and with the right mindset, you have a better chances to survive and win. Important, win the violent encounter. Okay. So by the end of the day, your mindset is the weapon. Your mind and your heart. People say, what well, has to do the heart now, Luca? I mean, this is another love guns and stuff. Yes, it is. Let me tell you. Your brain is what somehow can memorize all the training you need to do. You know, your brain is the one keeps uh, all things in motion and, uh, uh, let's say, in a synchronized way, in an articulated way, at that point, you know, your training will kick in and you don't think anymore. It is only your ingrained in your brain. But what is really that motivates you to defend somebody else's life or to defend your life or, you know, even to do the things that normally you say, you know what, I, I'll do everything I can to stop evil. Is your heart. That's the real fuel. That's the real sparkle. And as I said, there is a triangle. Training, of course, the right gun and heart. All that blends in mindset. Your mindset. You are never going to give up. So that's very important. We will go through that. Then, of course, we go to uh, types of guns and calibers. Find a gun that fits you. Sometimes, you know, you go to the gun shop. They try to sell you everything they can, but you don't get the right gun. Guess what? I'm going to help you out to find the right gun. Then we go a dedicated carry systems. How to carry with safety and efficiency. I will show you every way in the world you can carry a handgun for self-defense in a safe way. And also in the unsafe way, because I want to know exactly what you should avoid. Of course, if you can, you still want to do what you want. Then ammunition for self-defense. We will go through the best ammunition that you can use, what to avoid, for liability, for everything else. Then we go, of course, the criminal mindset and the color of awareness. The bottom line is, you know, if you have to fight somebody, you're already lost. Or at least, you know, you lost the edge. Because you, you're real... The real fight is that you, that is uh, really the, is the one that you can avoid it. If you knew that he was coming at you or towards you, you probably had a chance to avoid it. 
that's this, the, the, our goal as a law abiding citizen. We don't want to be, uh, find ourselves in fights unless really we have no other chance. But the point is, how do you do that? You must know your, uh, uh, how to get awareness. That's why we teach the color of awareness, the colors of awareness. And on top, the criminal mindset. We need to start to think like criminals to understand how to defeat them. Then we go to different scenarios of escalation of force. Scenarios, when to shoot or not to shoot. And we also explain the 20 feet myth. People think, you know, 20 feet is far enough. Somebody with a knife at 21, 25 feet, oh, is okay. Guess what? He can reach you out and probably stab you three times in less than 1.5 seconds. Seriously, we'll, I will prove it to you. Use a deadly force. When you can shoot, are you really... Do you really know when you can shoot according to our Arizona state laws, legally, for self-defense? Seriously. I mean, that's very important. You know, this is not like you make a mistake and, oh, sorry. No. They throw your ass in jail. Okay, You're not Hillary Clinton, okay? They will throw your ass in jail if you make a mistake. That's the bottom line. And you, you should. You know, you, 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 we cannot afford mistakes. We cannot, you know... Um, Use violence without the right, uh, at more important, legal, you know, justification. Now, after the shooting, criminal civil liability. Prepare now before it happens. So guess what? You win a gunfight, you think that you, you, your fight is over? No, you just started it. Especially if you have no witnesses. Good luck. So, I want to give you all the important information I can to prepare yourself, to defend your family, to defend your, your assets, to defend everything you own and you work hard. The more important to defend your freedom. That's, that's part there, just the chapter that we go through probably in 30 minutes. That's what they all show. They all show. They, they all, they all uh, you know, class. By the way, my classes, as I said, the Arizona CCW classes that I teach, they're about between five and six hours. So bring some coffee because you're going to need it. And I don't take many breaks. Normally we march through like, really like soldiers. Because I want to be sure that you're going to have the best information you can, most information you can. Okay? Even as I said, I could send you home with an hour class just to give you the minimum that the state requires. But I don't do that. Then we have related laws. You know, the different laws according to the Arizona Revised Statute that we must know. And I'm not an attorney. I'm not trying to teach a law. I'm not judge. Okay? I'm just... I'm, I'm trying to share what I can read. I, I invite you yourself to be responsible to read it for yourself. Then we'll talk about the Castle Doctrine Law in Arizona. Yes, Castle Doctrine. And also stand your ground. Yes, you must know that. Then we go to the constitutional carry, open carry, who can carry. But this is a CCW class. People, why, why do we talk about open carry? Because you know what? It's something you should know. You should know when to carry, how to carry. Now, where and how you can legally carry a firearm in Arizona? Guess what? There are some places you cannot carry. And if you make a mistake, I guess what? You're going to get in a lot of trouble. So I want to share with you all this information. For example, if you go to a voting polls during election time, you think you can carry a gun or a weapon? Uh, we will talk about it. Uh, you need to look at all this information, you know, and it's very important. You know, you drive maybe on Route 66, you go to Peach Spring, through Peach Spring, Indian Reservation. Let's stop for a second to get some gas. Guess what? The moment that you get out of the main, you know, state road, you are in Indian territory, and there is no more Second Amendment there. And if they catch you with a gun, you are in a real serious trouble. Now, you know, contact with law enforcement while carrying a firearm. How to be, you know, um, understand how to interact with the law enforcement. What to say, what not to say. When they ask you questions, what to answer? Is it somebody, if a law enforcement asks you if you have a gun or a firearm, you must answer. That's not like uh, an option. I want to be sure you know you behave, you, you're polite, and more important, you're safe for you and for the officer. Then we talk about interstate travel with firearms and stay reciprocity. How to clean a firearm, basic hygiene and safety precautions. Yes, there are some things that you should know. And all required forms, we will go through the required forms, and we give you fee, free fingerprinting. Normally, it's a $15, $20 free for this class. Okay? And we get a certification, all the stuff. Guess what? All these five hours, normally, is $85 plus fingerprinting. You get, first of all, if you bring a friend, you have $20 off, $65. Then, the beautiful thing, you got free fingerprinting. That's not bad at all. 
And guess what? If you are a single mother, and I mean really single, not with a bunch of boyfriends hanging around, you know, somebody who needs help, and, you know, maybe economically, you, you, you know, you need help. And we keep this private, by the way. I've done many single moms, kept them private. I'm not going to advertise that when you are, uh, you know, on, on the, in the class. You're going to be treated like everybody else. We respect your privacy. You get a free class. But, you know, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, limited places. You know, I don't have, oh yeah, I cannot do a class all free moms, okay, free single moms. So that's the story. So now, if you want to join this class, what to do? Let me tell you. Write it down. First of all, I give you my email. Let me give you the website. azccw.us. Okay? azccw.us. That's very important. You can find there my email. zana at zana.us. But let's say you're already in Havasu City. Guess what? What I want you to do, you contact directly uh, against all enemies. Because he's a great guy, and I want you really that uh, you talk directly to him, to Patrick, and you book the class. For example, phone number, write it, ready to write, 928-444-5778. 928-444-5778. And against all enemies, is situated 2152 McCulloch Boulevard North, Suite 8, Lake Havasu City. All right? And the website is aaeamerica.com. Now, it is very important, as I said, talk to Patrick when you book the class. Say that you bring a friend and bring a friend and you get both $20 off. So you pay 65 bucks. Can be that, okay? It's the best price really in the market for the quality you get. All right. That's the bottom line. Uh, that's the bottom line. Now, now, the thing I want to tell you briefly, the curriculum that we are preparing with uh, Patrick from Against All Enemies for the AR-15 rifle home defense. You know, there are many things you can use for home defense. Normally, people use the gun, shotgun, think it's a great guy, think that's true. But I really believe that uh, at the end of the day, the AR-15 rifle is the best tool for home defense. People say, really? Yes, I tell you why. First of all, everybody can shoot an AR-15 and be proficient and be accurate. You want to compare the accuracy you have with a handgun under stress when you have a rifle with a stock and almost no recoil? People say, well, I have the shotgun. That's the best thing. You know what? Yes, if you're probably the, talking about firepower, I'm talking about as a volume of fire. No, as a power Ballistic power, yes. You get one ounce slug, it's going to be knocked down. An elephant, completely agree with that. Problem though, did you ever try to see, uh, let's say, back shots flying through drywall or a slug flying, flying through several walls and maybe through apartments to apartment? That's what happens. Unless you live in the middle of nowhere and you're waiting for, you know, jack the buffalo crossing your door, then that point, go ahead with the slug, okay? But if you're living in a, in a city, in a town, in an urban environment, that even if you have, like, you know, in the country, but you have, let's say, 100 yards from you, you have another house, guess what? Be careful. Shotgun can be very dangerous. What if you have, you know, behind the, you know, the wall that is maybe your children's room? Are you sure you want to shoot even a 9 millimeter slug? That would be so devastating. It goes through very easily to drywall. So that's why the 55 grains... Even before we get into special ammunition that we will go through the class, it's the, probably the best round, less dangerous, f to over-penetrate in a regular household. So right there we have a very good reason. Safety. Number two, accuracy. Number three, devastating power on flash. Handgun is always an underpowering tool. You don't have handgun as the first instrument to go to war. It's a tool that normally I use, we use, to fight our way to the rifle. That's the truth. Ballistically, the handgun is an inferior product. Don't get me wrong, it still hurts you. But like, you know, you have a hammer. When you have a, a rifle, like you have a super powerful knife. Okay? That's the bottom line. So, 
Let's think about it. A rifle is much more powerful than a handgun. People say, oh, the shotgun is much more powerful. Yes, that's true. But I can shoot six rounds of handgun, excuse me, or rifle, AR-15, while you're shooting one probably round, one shot, shell, excuse me, of, of, of shotgun. Because it takes much more time to cycle the shotgun. Normally, you know, every shooter, you can shoot like uh, one round per second, you know, manually chambering and, you know, racking that, that shotgun. But with a the, with the rifle, you can do at least five rounds per second. And I proved that to you on YouTube with a broken finger with a timer. That's true. Go to just see, you know, Zanna shooting five rounds in one second. Okay? That's without even warming up with the Don't Trade On Us rifle. So you got much more firepower. Then you want to compare uh, 17 rounds, even on the highest capacity magazine of a handgun, like a Glock or any other type of gun like that, or don't even get me going with a revolver six rounds, or even like six or even eight rounds or shot shells, could be for a, hand, a shotgun, when you have 30 rounds, and I say 30 rounds mag, well... You don't even need to worry most of the time to, to do any type of tactical recoil, excuse me, emergency recoil or tactical recoil. You can most of the times, unless you have, you know, a gang, a full gang of, you know, few elements, attackers, home invaders, probably you need extra mag. But the point is with one mag, 30 rounds, you can face much better scenarios than you were facing with just a handgun. So that's very important. Now, normally another thing to understand, not everybody can handle a shotgun. Even as a body type, different height, different body, different weight. Guess what? An AR-15 is adjustable, especially if you get one with the, the regular, you know, collapsible stock. Uh, I mean, the six step, six position stock can be adapted to any type of person. No recoil or almost no recoil. If you know how to use it with the right technique, it's really, really easy. Even a 12 year old girl can do that. So that's the point. And then, of course, other things. The curriculum. Let's go. Uh, first of all, why we said this, the different reasons. This is just a little splash, okay? Now, uh, part of the curriculum, home safety issues, over penetration, cover against concealment, unauthorized person, ammunition for your rifle. That's what we cover. Home preparedness plan. You must have a plan. You want to be sure you're securing your entrances, lights, safe room, warning system, your gear. You have a light on your rifle, cell phone ready to go, emergency kit, a vest where you can carry all these things, communication, how you want to talk to between maybe, you know, your son or anybody else around the house in case, you know, you're separated. Ear protection, eye protection, water, believe it or not, you must have water, always. What if you get stuck in your safe room for a while? Emergency plan, you must write it down, you know. Uh, don't forget also the uh, 911 call. You want to be sure that she's already prepared, written down. And what happens when the police arrive? We will go through all these things during the class. Then we have another part of the curriculum. We talk about the AR-15 rifle in general as the parts. You know, you must know each part, each component, how it works, and more important, how to load it, unload it, chamber check, safety. Of course, how to, organ to engage the safety. Many people don't even know that, believe it or not. How to modify it for the home defense. How much stuff you want to add, how much stuff you don't want. What is really important? Looking at the flash eye that you have, your sling, your light, a red dot is really important. Let's see. The different stances. We focus, of course, the one that normally we would use for home defense, but also want to be sure we get also everything we need to know how to be become a rifleman. But we will focus mostly on what you use, mostly in the house. Normally in the house, you're not going to do exactly a prone, accurate shot, you know, in prone position. We're going to go through maybe probably squatting, shooting behind cover, seating even if you have to, maybe a side prone. But we'll go through all of them. Okay? Standing, very important. How to zero your R15 for your home. Because remember, at the home, normally you should be between 15, 20 yards. You're not going to shoot 100 yards in your home unless you have a castle, okay? That's the bottom line. You want to compensate for the close distances, point of aim, point of impact. You know that Air 15 normally has a, a gap, you know? Your front side is about three or four inches higher sometimes. So you got to check it out exactly what type of front side you have. Now, 
We want to also look in the different type of uh, techniques. Control pair. Why two is better than one? The trigger reset. Are you familiar with that? Speed shooting. But doesn't mean just blasting. Still keeping, you know, some sort of sense. You don't blast. You always have, a, you know, some sort of a side picture. The breathing. Do we really care at these distances? Now, emergency reload, tactical reload. You know the difference? You know why it's important to do a tactical reload? Why also is important to be able to have an emergency reload? Now, we will talk about the malfunction. Type 1, 2, and 3. Yes, the mal rifle may malfunction. You, you need to be able to clear it in maybe a couple seconds. Otherwise, you must have, you know, backup gun. Facing multiple attackers. And we go through different scenarios. Also, a real-life situation. You're going to have a, a plastic uh, rifle, and you're going to face different attackers. With a laser, you're going to have a laser gun. Yes. Close contact drill. You need to learn how to engage an attacker at breathing distances. Let's say somebody at two yards, three yards, has to jump on you. What do you do? Failure to stop drill. What if uh, the uh, home invader is uh, wearing a body armor? We must know what to do. That's the bottom line. We must train for that. Then we want to go through the fundamentals of retention and transition to sidearm. You know, somebody's trying to snag your rifle. How can you fight it back? How can you retain it? We will go through dry practice. And then also at the end, we'll go through basic exercises. Cleaning a room. Clearing, not cleaning. <laughs> now I'm becoming really funny there. I mean, I'm not talking about cleaning like sweeping the floor. I'm talking about clearing the room in case there is any type of uh, home invaders. But my question is, should I do it? Should you do it, really? It's something you want to do by yourself without really deep training. Normally, SWAT trims, you know, train for a year, years. And normally, at least always two or three at a time together. But what if you are by yourself, help is always 10 minutes away, and your daughter or your wife is screaming, yelling, and she's maybe being raped? It's a bad scenario. You know, you must decide. You want to wait 10 minutes or you want to at least know what you can to clear the room in a way that you have a chance. Okay? How to open a door with your rifle. How to go around corners. Tactics and scenarios. This is just a little bit of the curriculum that uh, we will go through in the next coming classes that uh, we are planning with Against All Enemies in Lake Havasu, Arizona. And as I said... Feel free to call also, you know, my friend Patrick, okay? Because Against All Enemies is in Havasu City, 2152 McCulloch Boulevard, North, Suite B, okay? And the phone number is 928-444-5778. Hey, I'm interested about the class AR-15 for home defense. We'll look at Zen. I would like to... And by the way, uh, Patrick is a, is a veteran, a U.S. Marine veteran. And he spent nine years with the Marine Corps, and he's going to be part of this class. He's going to be sharing, you know, his uh, expertise, his experience in the classes. I'm really proud to work with him. I'm really humbled to work with him. All right, guys, that's pretty much the story. You know, I was supposed to talk about uh, how to be safe with a child or an infant uh, in your home. Guess what? We'll talk next Sunday about that. And also, I may write a blog about it. If you want to go to ar15shop.us, I have a blog section. Uh, probably I put it there. Also, lovegunsfreedom.com. Now, if you want to support the show, very simple. As you know, sometimes, you know, during the first hour, I even didn't pimp anything. I didn't push any product. I should. You know, I should. Really, I should. But there is a way to do it. First of all, support KTOX. KTOX is a great station. I tell you, I don't know any other commercial stations that they let this information out. You know, especially the first hour. I mean, did you hear the first hour? This is serious stuff. And also listen to the other hour. Every hour. Everything. And the freedom of speech. You can come here anytime. You can call me anytime. Just email me. Zan at Zan .us, And whatever you want to say, I'll give you the microphone. Of course, topics that they are in the same type of nature of the show. Okay? If you want to talk about the Kardashian, this is the wrong show. By the way, some people, you know, people PM me every day. I want to be on the show. You already been on the show three times probably. Give me a break. Okay, I say, yes, this is your show too, but I need to, I have only three hours weekly show. I cannot let you be every week, okay? So, chill out, okay? Now, if you go to zana.us, www.zana.us, 
You can download any of my songs for 99 cents. And also, of course, ar15shop.us, one of my companies, and you can also there look what we do. Okay? Gun training, firearms, AR-15s, everything. More important, I need your help. Spread the show. Now, little break. We're going for our number three, the final hour. It's going to be an interesting hour, I'm telling you already. Uh, it's going to be an hour talking about really what happens when a man knows that he has few a lim- few months to live. It's already the end. The doctors gave him maybe a couple more months. This is a friend also. He's been on my show a couple times. He's a freedom advocate. And uh, you know, it breaks my heart a little bit, but at the same time I'm very happy he was on my show with me because I wanted to share this humanity moment. Remind us that we are humans. We have limited time on this planet. So whatever we want to do, whatever dream we have, whatever you know goal we have, we better do it. We better don't waste any second of our life, okay? Because you never know when our time is coming. Do not go away. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We look at Zanna and ready for our number three. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Lucas Zan on United States FM Network. Have you ever met someone on an online dating site and thought, wow, this guy is perfect for me, or she is simply amazing, only to find out they were hiding a deep, dark secret? They plan to vote for Hillary. Freedomlovers.us was created for singles who want to exchange ideas and a love for freedom. People who are looking for solutions to create and defend freedom in the real world. And at the same time, getting that once-in-a-lifetime chance to find their true soulmate. Whether you are interested in meeting your soulmate, making new friends, networking, or hanging out with that like-minded liberty lover, visit freedomlovers.us. It's the first free dating site and community. So patriots, don't waste your time with other dating sites. Freedomlovers.us is the place where like-minded singles really live. Here we go, guys and girls. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We'll look at Zanna. OK Talks 1340 AM and also on LoveGunsFreedom.com. This is the hour about love. As you know, this hour for me, it's the hour that pretty much we go back to our humanity. We do a lot of things. We fight. We struggle. We advocate for causes. Uh, we believe in our own, you know, beliefs, you know. At the end, though, we remember ourselves. We remind ourselves that we are human beings. We are here on this planet for a limited time. And what is the most powerful thing, really, we have all together? I really believe it's love. And uh, it's something that, at least as human beings, even between humans and animals, because I can love an animal, too, you know, my cats, my dogs, you know. But really, when it comes to human beings, that... We understand we are here all together. We are all under the same sky. And at the end of the day, we're all going to be gone one day. And I'm not going to get into religion because you can believe or not, I don't care. This is the point that we will leave this body. That's a fact. I really believe that uh, it's going to bring us back to reality and put everything in perspective. The life is precious. Life is really like a breath. And it goes fast. If you think about it, bang, you know, even... Like, even in the best case scenario, you can make it to behold. Think how really, how, how the years went fast. Sometimes, you know, we do things that we didn't want to do, or maybe we didn't do things that we wish we did. The point is, we are here. We do our best. Now, as I said, through Facebook, I've been meeting a lot of interesting people. And a lot of people, they really, you know, not just because I'm my Facebook friends, but I really like what they've been doing. And I, 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 I let's say, share the same goals. And the main goal that I have with my Facebook friends, at least many of them, is freedom. Freedom and the fact that we own our body. That's the most powerful piece of real estate that we should have. I don't care if you are Bill Gates or if you are just the most homeless guy in town. The point, we still have one thing that we should be proud and we should be in charge. It is our body. It is our first piece of real estate. It's the foundation of freedom. When it comes down to this uh, topic about freedom... 
It comes down also who owns our body and the opportunity and the right to make our own choices when it comes down to what we like to put in our body. If I want to smoke a cigarette, it's your right. I'm not telling you it's right or not. I don't smoke. But if you want to get the tobacco and nicotine and you want to pay for it, go ahead. It's your body. If you want to smoke marijuana, it is your body. And I'm not even going to the medical aspect because I know there is a lot of information out there that they try to suppress marijuana can have a great a medical impact, better than drugs. But I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you what is right or wrong. I'm just telling you it is your body. You should be able to enjoy a herb for recreational without going through the stress and the drama of government trying to impound or take your property or put you in jail. But that's not even the point today. The point today I would like to bring on the show again, my friend Dennis, Dennis Bocchi. Probably last name, I always destroy. I will bring it again, and I'm going to ask him. The fact that a few days ago on Facebook, I found out that Dennis, uh, according to doctors, and I still say, you know, there is always a big error of something that, you know, doctors, they are not God. So let's put it this way. There are a lot of things can happen. But the point is Dennis posted on Facebook that he has a serious health problems, and he may be gone in a few months. Why I bring him on the show? First of all, because I like Dennis, and I like, you know, every human being that believes in freedom. But Dennis is somebody that is being an advocate when it comes down to the legalization or decriminalization, I would say, of marijuana. And I want to be sure, guys, you are there. You understand that this is not coming from a guy who smokes. I don't smoke anything. I don't like marijuana. But I would give my life to protect the right to others of others to smoke whatever they damn please without facing consequences. That's why I really... I am proud to consider myself then as a friend and also somebody that I respect because he's been doing this for years and I know how tough it is, especially in the state sometimes when you have lobbies against you. But now the point is I want to bring him on because I want to share with you what's happening to him. Maybe as a reminder that we are all here for a limited time. We should be a little nicer. We should sometimes lead a little more understanding. And also we should uh, appreciate the fact that we need to have more people like Dennis out there and because we should have the right to decide how we want to cure ourselves also. I know Dennis has some alternative ideas and also maybe needs some help. So I'm here. I'm doing my best. And uh, let me bring Dennis. Dennis, are you there? Yes, I am. All right. First of thank all, Dennis. Thank you for the gracious thank introduction. You, thank you, my friend. And by the way, you sound from your voice, you sound great. But uh, tell me a little bit what's going on with you, first of all. Tell us a little more details. What, what do you have? Well, I found out on... On August 7th, that I have uh, colon cancer, and it's gone fourth stage. Stage four, that means it spread into, into the abdominal walls of my of my tummy, mm. and it will get in, it will be getting other organs other than my colon. Mm. And uh, that was on July 7th, and you know it started off with a a long. Uh, illness that I probably, I obviously should have gone to the doctor sooner. I thought I had lactose intolerant. I had developed the inability to digest milk, so I chased that diet for a while. Mm. But in, in the end, it's I have uh, two cookie monsters in my colon, and uh, one of them is causing a blockage to my intestine now and then. And uh, the doctor said there's no way to operate the uh, to resolve the problem, he says the cancer spread so far, it's uh, it's beyond uh, anything. Maybe chemotherapy might add another six months to a, maybe a year to my life, but it will be under, you know, poison. So, mm. so that was July 7th, and now it's, it's July 24th. So the doctor said that they didn't think I, they thought I could be gone in just a couple months when they first uh, looked at it, so... I don't, they don't know everything, but uh, it was quite a shocker. I'm 63 years old, and i got to admit, I probably should have seen the doctors more often and had health insurance, so it's partially my fault for not taking care of my body as well as I should, mm. but here we are. A so, question, um, you know, at this point, whatever it is, it is, okay? I mean... Uh, you can blame fault, whatever. Yes, a control would have maybe helped you to take a, see this before. But the point now is you are where you are. First of all, are you in, are you in pain? Do you feel pain? No. I, you know, I do have a little bit of pain, but 
I have, uh, since I got out of the hospital, I've been out of the hospital for a week. I've used uh, oxycodone twice on the first day out of the hospital. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've stopped using any kind of uh, morphine or, or, or opiate. Mm. Uh, so uh, I'm still still all here, you know, as far know. as I'm so you under medi- not all doped up. So you're under medication for pain right now, are you? No. No. Okay. I'm not using I'm not using any for pain. Okay. What do you I, do? What do you use? I have, it, I have uh, medication available, you mm-hmm. know, at my on my desk, you know, with mm-hmm. for pain. I'm just not using it. The the opiates that they prescribe are constipating, mm. and the disease. I you know the issue I'm dealing with is, you know, constipation at times. Mm. So. Counterproductive. Well, also, essentially, you... go ahead. Essentially, they basically told me to go home and, and uh, prepare to die. Mm. They said that if I had a, if I was around at Christmas time, it would be a miracle. So okay. Uh, so what do you? Make... What what type of plan do you have? I mean, you just let it go, or you try to fight back uh, with some solutions? And uh, you know. I, I respect both. I mean, this is your body. You decide what you want. But I'm curious to see what is your state of mind. Well, you know, there's a myth among the activists that cannabis cures cancer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've always considered it somewhat of a myth. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I always thought it was had a certain ring to it. There's some studies that Richard Nixon ordered in the early 70s that showed that cannabis... uh, actually stopped tumor growth. Mm -hmm. They never said that it cured tumors, Mm -hmm. but there's other evidence from around the world that there seems to be amounting evidence that it has a certain effect on cancers and tumors. Mm -hmm. So uh, my friends, being an activist and having thousands of friends on Facebook and stuff, they wanted me to try what they call RSO, which is Rick Simpson oil. Mm-hmm. which is a, a regime of taking a certain amount of cannabis extracts for about 30 days mm-hmm. uh, and increasing heavier head and heavier doses and then for the last 10 days breaking it off and stopping it. And uh, it can be kind of expensive. Mm. Uh, so what they decided, you know, I could go for one round, but they decided they wanted to run a... Uh, a GoFundMe uh, page for Dennis Bolke. Mm-hmm. GoFundMe, Dennis, B-O-H-L-K-E, and you can contribute to this, uh, my supply of this Rick Simpson oil. And there's uh, many reports that it does cure cancer, and uh, I don't know, you know, I just don't know if it's a myth or not. Well, let, let's, so, put it, let's put it in this way, Dennis. Uh, after all, you have nothing to lose. Am I right? The doctors already told you. No. There is nothing to lose. No. Okay. No. Uh, we are not no, talking there's... about a million dollars. Okay. Oh, my gosh. We have to sell your home or things like that. We're talking about what? $4,000 for the cure, right? About that. Okay. Yeah. I, I see the goal. I'm here right yeah. now. $4,000. Well, I and, th- I re- and I raised enough in the first week and a half to get the, my first regime mm-hmm. ready to go. Yeah. You know? And you can Go see, ahead. you can right. see immediately how this reacts to you. I mean, you know, probably in a couple of weeks, you've already started to see if there are some, you know, improvements or not. And my point is, uh, all the people out there that, of course, support also, they been knowing you all these years for all the things you've been doing. And you've been doing a lot of things as a completely volunteers. I mean, they're giving hours of your life and also as a human being. I mean, let's say if I know that a friend of mine, there is no choices, there are no chance, excuse me. And the only thing we may try is this one. And all we have to do is maybe, hey, let's chip in 10, 20 bucks. I mean, we take, we don't need many. Uh, to reach the goal is not like something possible. Uh, I think that would be definitely worth trying. And then at that point, yeah. we can say, you know what? We tried. And then at that point. Well, I'm also go ahead. going to give the results. Yeah, you know? exactly. I mean, this is not, not going to be mythical. I mean, if I survive till Christmas time, that will be phenomenal. And if I'm, you know, if I have quality life and I and I actually beat this, yeah, I mean, I mean, let's shout it from the rooftops. Exactly. Or if I die, I lose. You know. Yeah, 
But you try. You got to try. And I think it's worth, especially now, because you as I said, I'm no doctor. And, uh, you know, you're no doctor either, for what I understand. But we want to give no. a chance to, to try things that uh, we, we may find out that maybe they are really doing something also to this problem. I mean, I know for sure. I know a lot of people, you know very well, when it comes down to antidepression and to try to, let's say, a uh, lot of people who use marijuana for, uh, let's say, medical use, completely, when it comes down to the, depress the, the depression and other things that could be, even with pain, it's really powerful yeah. and can really be proven that as a, as a lot of medical purposes, so much now that we have many states uh, also allowing uh, people to use marijuana for medical purposes. But the point now is, would be something to find out that beside the, the pain, uh, let's say, side, pro, pro sides, the marijuana could also change the course of the cancer. And I'm just here, you know, as I said, as you said, we don't know for sure. I know that I read a lot of cases. I read a lot of things on the Internet, but, you know, I never found them by myself in person. You would be the first person I know directly. I would say, wow, that would be well, I, a history. I could be. I can report the results from the first week of being home from the hospital. Yeah. Having an understanding of what the problem was, is, and having access to the, not the full regime of the medicine, but like, you know, the chipping, you know, the, yeah. everybody's half empty bottles in the refrigerators. Yeah. So I've been able to get access to suppositories of high concentrated cannabis. And, uh, my goodness, it's, it's, I'm free and clear. I mean, I've been for a week. I'm healthier than I ever been. Really? As far as, yeah, wow. yeah. So, question. And you know, it, it has addressed the problem. Yeah. Of uh, the blockage in my intestines directly by suppository. So I'm, I'm here to report that it, at first it looks very positive. Mm. Uh, wow. This the is, this is amazing. I mean, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. The, the, the big problem I have is I, I have a loss of. Oh, wait, I lost about 30 pounds, so yeah. I'm, I'm looking very gaunt. So I'm mm. struggling to get weight on. Mm. And uh, I was so worried about the blockage that I was kind of starving myself. But now that I have more confidence in that that I'm passing, my intestines are all working, uh, I'm going to put some weight on. Maybe if I gain weight, I win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, so, uh, there is hope. As I said, till there is life, we're not dead yet. We still have hope in anything. So yeah. it's our, you know, and of course, after all, it's your choice to decide if you want to fight or not. And I'm glad you're fighting because I really think you can, as a human being, as I even never met you, uh, you've been giving so much beautiful things to, to this uh, reality that we're living. Sometimes I think we're living in the matrix, but I don't care because at the end of the day, we try even in this simulated reality, whatever it is, to do our best, interacting with each other. And I always believe that at the end, what it is about here, it is not about politics, it is not about left or right or whatever. It is about, about good against evil. And uh, I'm not saying that I'm a saint, I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I really believe at the end, we are facing evil as human beings, even with our imperfections, and we try to do the right thing every time we can, or at least we should. And that's what it's about. Even when it comes down to the people say, what has to do this with the legalization of marijuana? It has a lot to do. But when you see an innocent man or woman being uh, taken to prison, uh, being uh, taken away her freedom or his freedom, taken away her or his property, just because uh, owns a plant, or just because decides to cure themselves with a plant, that's a battle good against evil. It is not about drugs or, you know, left or right issues. It's about corruption and about, of course, try to make some sort of sense when it comes down to if we have individual rights or not. So I really believe what we are doing here, it is for a limited time, it's almost like a test, and we do our best. And this is, of course, my two cents philosophy. But what do you think about life? What is your vision of life? Why are we are here? I mean, I'm, I'm sure right now, in your, in, right now, in the moment that you're facing... Well, you have been thinking. What do you, you think? Know, there's, there's been some questions about, like, my activism, and I'm, I'm very proud of the activism I've done. And uh, the life I've lived, I'll be 63 years old. I'm 63 years old. And, uh, well, the end is pretty damn close. I figured I had about 20 years more to live to, to play out some games. But living, I think, is altruistic. If you want to have a spiritual life, I thought many, many years ago that I wanted to have a spiritual existence and 
And one of the <clears throat> Christian things that G- Jesus said was that three men are in a room and they're speaking of his name. Mm-hmm. His spirit is alive. And I translated that into mean that if there's three people in a room talking about me, my spirit is alive. So as a my activism was always, I considered it part of my spiritual existence. And uh, my business life, I'm very proud of it. I've done everything has been on the, on the up and up. I've always been an honest businessman, and I've, I've dealt, uh, I've created products that are sold all over the world. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had a good life. Uh, but the activism was, was a big part of my life, and it still is. I'm having a, uh, 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 I guess it's kind of a living memorial coming up on Saturday mm-hmm. where the people that I have been, uh, that want to meet me that haven't, uh, had a chance to meet me can come by my house and have an, uh, come by and say hi and, and tell me about what they thought about what's going on, you know, because I've been very, very verbal. Uh, I, I recognize as an inventor that there is something happening in our society through social media. And what's happening is a natural digital political machines are coalescing that are just organically cre- being created. And uh, I think that certain tools can be added to the tool chest for that. And I think that we can have a, a wonderful future as a from that free democratic republic society. Question. And uh, if I can I stop you, yeah. second, you know, you, I'm sure any one of us, I guess, I mean myself, you always say we have a lot of things we look back and oh, I'm, I did that, I'm happy about that. But there's always something that says I wish I did differently, or I wish I did that thing, maybe because I wasn't, I don't know, I didn't have enough. Uh, um, sometimes you, we just shy, or sometimes we just don't have the right opportunity, and we regret that miss thing that we wanted to do. What is your regret, if you have any? in your life? Well, I wish I would have been more successful. I worked very hard at being so I wouldn't be famous. I mean, that probably was a, that had some benefit. Uh, I haven't had a job where I got a paycheck since I was 25 years old. Mm. I worked as a computer expert at JPL, uh, USC, UCLA, you know, Jet Propulsion Laboratory when I was in my 18, 19 years old, fixing their computers. And I just didn't want to work for people. So since the age of 25, I've been self-employed. And so I'm not looking back at my life and saying that, you know, I spent my whole life working for a boss or something. I'm looking back saying I pursued the the ideas and the objectives that I created for myself. Mm -hmm. I lived a free life. I had a Probably I, I regret not having kept my uh, medical insurance mm. up to date all the time. But, you know, I, I lived under the radar, as many people would wish. I never, there was like two decades that I did not do any business with people in Arizona. Because I didn't want people to know what I was doing. I created a, an operating system for machine tools that makes the world a more beautiful place. Mm. So... That's kind of what I'm... From the emotional, yeah, the from, from the human side, you know, I understand it's from the business, from your personal human side, when it even comes down to the love side, anything that you wish you did differently or you're happy the way things went? Oh, boy, there's some been some disappointments in my life that uh, I made some bad decisions that I, I do regret. But I don't feel any great remorse over them. I think I would have probably done the same things over and over again. I've had a, a, a close relationship with my parents, and that I value greatly. And uh, actually, it's kind of a, a, a new kind of priority when they tell you you're going to die. I mean, it does make you think a great deal. Of course I don't want to expire, yeah. but it, it also makes the priorities much different Yes, for day-to-day. That's true. And it, 
it, it makes you think about learning things. One of the things that struck me was in the middle of the night, I, I realized that I didn't have to learn anything anymore. You know, it was pointless to learn anything from this point on. Because in my whole life, it's been spent learning. And that's been a thrill. Because I am what they call an autodidact. I'm a self-taught person. Mm -hmm. I, ha I had uh, no education other than a high school education. And I did not go to college. And I basically got purged from the Work Society in 1982 wow. with Ronald Reagan. And I decided to create my own uh, company or my own means of income. Yeah, straight. So I, I've been a problem solver most of my life interesting we feel uh, i feel like uh we're talking about yourself i was looking a little bit by myself you know pretty much the same story uh, i'm self-taught i really decided you know i'm a drop out at university i didn't really finish anything and uh, i never worked for a paycheck all my life i mean maybe a few uh -huh. months but i understand they also the the pro and don't you know there is a there's a great side of a wow. You know, you feel like uh, at least you are free, more free than other people out there. At the same time, of course, you have more responsibility and the moment that you stop, oh, yeah. you know, you can stop yeah. at any time. That's the bottom line. But I'm, yeah. I'm happy about that. At least, you know, I, I, go ahead. One of the things, you know, I have owned my, honed my technical skills over the years. And when I was in the hospital, the CAT scans are not, are, are two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. And just looking at their data input, I realized that with my skill set, I could probably pretty easily create 3D modeling of CAT scan so that you could, you know, get a 3D model of your gut. Because I wanted to see how big the tumor was that yeah. was eating me up. Yeah. And that might be my my final project. Yeah. Wow. Well, at least do something that, like that. Uh, Talking about normally on my show, I don't talk about religion because I don't believe in religion itself personally. I believe in my own personal faith, and I always keep it pretty private. But I'm always curious to know my fellow humans, my friends, uh, what they think, what's happening after, you know. And everybody has their choice. As I said, I don't care. I'm not here to even uh, try to preach to others. But I'm curious as a friend, what what do you believe in? Uh, in the afterlife, there is an afterlife. What do you believe in general as a faith system? Do you have any special belief? If I can ask you. Well, many many years ago, I came up with my own what I call deep thought six. Mm -hmm. Basic tenet, basic idea is that the universe is expanding, <clears throat> and all all matter in the universe is expanding, which includes me, myself. As the expansion continues, some of this matter becomes what they call dark matter. Mm -hmm. the, and uh, so when I die, I do not believe <clears throat> that I will go, I will be carrying on as a physical existence. I don't think I'm going to heaven. Mm -hmm. I think that I, my existence <clears throat> goes out like a flame. And I think the people that I've impacted will can carry on. You know, my, my children will, will remember me. Uh, <clears throat> the genes, my children's children will remember me just because they're there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that my spiritual existence, my activism and my my businesses I have will in some way keep my spirit alive for a while, but it's 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 gone. I you know, I but I was struggling, consciously struggling to put my name in the timeline of computer history. And I may have succeeded in that I created a new way of control, controlling machine tools through graphic interfaces and without numbers, with just mouse control. So we're not done with that. And there's a couple ideas like, you know, if this does succeed or has some uh, helpful uh, to my health, I think that we should do something as a state. And if I'm alive and well in two years, mm -hmm. let's be doing something, my friend. You know, let's let's be down at the legislature. Let let's be talking to the legislature and let's say let's let's make this our state, the greatest state in the United States with medical health care. I think we should legalize marijuana 
tax it well and take the money and, and use it for human health services for the citizens of Arizona. So we have the best medical health facilities available to us mm -hmm. there are in the world. Well, I mean, and in Colorado is working the, pretty well that part. I I read that there is a lot of uh, revenues for from the marijuana. Is am I right or, or not? Yeah, I mean, they've redirected the money to education. Well, education is fine and dandy. It's just a bunch of school teachers, you know, Democrat school teachers. I think what the people really need is, I mean, when your kid breaks a leg, take them to a state clinic, get perfect health, you know, get good health care. You know, five bucks or, you know, put your driver's license down and be done with it. You know, and have the state take care of it. And we, we're selling almost $3 billion worth of marijuana in Arizona every year on the black market. If we could just get just get one-sixth of that, $500 billion, that's a half a billion dollars. Yeah. Uh, 500, yeah, it's a half a billion dollars. I mean, I mean, we could have hospitals and doctors and and. And really what I'm selling is the idea that in the future, our future can be much, much better. Well, for sure, and, for uh, sure one thing. We know one thing, that uh, like during the prohibition, okay, alcohol prohibition, this is the same concept. When you make one uh, product, especially like a natural product, you know, wine, beer, doesn't matter. Now we have a plant, same story, illegal. From the nominal value, there would be like few cents. After all, how much cost a little plant of marijuana in the real free market? Nothing. It's a plant. You know, the seeds probably can get them for free because you can plant it again. Same story with the grapes. You know, oh, yeah. you, can, you can grape grapes, you know, squeeze the grapes uh, for what? For a few cents. And then you make, uh, you know, your grape juice and you, and you get like a, a finally wine or whatever. But the point is, when uh -huh. it becomes illegal, everything becomes more expensive. And they were exactly the organized crime profits and prospers. That's why, you know, if you really want to put the drug cartels out of business, put this product, natural product like the plant marijuana, on the market as a free market, or at least like freer, uh, no more criminalized. Decriminalize it. There would be right now a big boost also to free uh, jails of uh, no violent crimes and more important to put out of business all these criminals that they traffic and by the way you know when you get uh, let's say marijuana from across the state you don't really know what they put inside there is no any real inspection they may start to put uh, you know additives they may start to put also chemicals to preserve it you don't know i mean it's different yeah. so that's another important thing you don't get the the, the things that are supposed to be healthy but my point is regardless people out there say you know i don't believe in marijuana that's fine that's your right But the point is you should never criminalize another human being for the choices of what he wants to do or she wants to do to consume for her body, always with the respect of others. Same story. People, they're afraid that marijuana use it may be, let's say, dangerous to society when they're driving. At that point, if you use the logic, you should allow outlaw all the beers, all the alcohol, because that's probably what causes most of the accidents. We cannot criminalize yeah. the collective, I mean, the, the individuals because of somebody else's Uh, mistakes or uh, let's say crimes same story with marijuana but my point is you know yes you know i really believe that i don't even like the word legalize i like the word decriminalization what do you think about this term i think it's a great idea uh i think i, I was just getting a call i got a little distracted but that's all right i'm gonna just ignore it for now okay are you with me yet Yeah, yeah, and we do. Sorry, the phone rang and I forgot to turn it off. Yes, and the point, you know, beside the, the fact that it's supposed to be that, But the taxes, I you know, honestly, you know, I understand what you say, you know, can be used like any other tax, unfortunately. Maybe I'm a little more extreme when it comes to that, and probably, you know, as I said, we don't need to agree on this one. But, you know, I really believe that if I want to re grow a plant in my own home, okay, and enjoy it, Uh, like, for example, I like to grow basil and spinach and things like that, okay? And uh, let's say I want to grow grapes and make wine. I don't believe government should tax me because I want to make my own wine and maybe have a little fun at night, okay? That's wrong. The same story, I believe that yeah. the, the person that uh, wants to enjoy growing a few plants of marijuana or any plants that make sense for a family or personal use and then wants to use them shouldn't be taxed. At that point, you know, it's my product, yeah. you know. But beside that, yes, I prefer that anyway. If we had to choose one, 
I rather to see the marijuana on the market and, uh, you know, I rather to get the money to taxes than give it to the drug cartels. That's for sure. Well, I'm always, I always supported growing, being able to grow your own. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's ridiculous that the government's impeding so much. But, you know, growing good marijuana is, is, a, is an art in itself. So uh, not just anybody can grow what you're going to get at the dispensary. Yeah. But, I just also wanted to say that this Rick Simpson oil, it's been kind of ironic in that my activism has also been supportive of the medical marijuana uh, just because of freedom. Yeah. And uh, now I find myself uh, benefiting from that in that these uh, Rick Simpson oils are available in our state, and there is an infrastructure of people providing it to people. And uh, it'll be real interesting to see how this works out. Yeah, no, I, I believe it. It's worth I, trying, I, worth trying, definitely. And the fact you're feeling yeah. better right now. I mean, you told me that uh, at least physically uh, you're feeling better. Am I right, the last few days? I feel better. Yeah. I feel better. You know, I get out of the hospital. I, uh, I have uh, my intestinal tracts are working. Mm -hmm. I have to go through the humiliation of suppositories. But I feel much better, and I'm starting to eat a little bit. I, I'm still going negative on the weight loss. Yeah. So maybe in a month I'll know if I'm going to make it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it could go very fast, but for now I feel much better. And uh, I'm going to give this uh, Rick Simpson oil the shot before chemotherapy mm. to see what happens. Listen, the, even if, let's say worst case scenario, let's say. I don't know. We'll see how it happens. But meanwhile, the fact that you at least have a better quality of life, okay, that uh, you're feeling better, I think that's priceless right there. I mean, because but I know... I, I agree. You know, I but know people... There is some detrimental effects to the Rick Simpson oil. Yeah. In that you get high as a kite. And that there is, is can happen. And that can get some use, getting used to. I mean, they're asking to you to imbibe a, a a tremendous amount, effectively about uh, maybe an ounce of marijuana a day through mm. a concentrate. Wow. So, That's a lot of... but the good thing of the suppositories, you don't get high off it, mm -hmm. but your bottom gets high. Mm. And uh, if you don't have any effect, you might be sleepy. Question. What, so what, it's not a rec recreational. Yeah, no, I understand. Do, to buy this, uh, let's say, uh, oil or marijuana, this essence of marijuana, these, uh, let's say, medical principles extracted by the marijuana, uh, is it like there are any legal challenges? I mean, people can go to jail or under no. the laws that we have now, it's okay under our Arizona. Uh, under the laws, it's okay. I want to get that message out. Mm -hmm. It is okay. It does cost about six. It's about, you need about 60 grams to do the regime, mm -hmm. and it comes out to about $3,600 at a dispensary. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting. Well, uh, but considering that, there, and there's other suppliers uh, out there, too. Yeah. And that's very, uh, uh, comparing to other type of traditional re regimen, okay, that's like a, a tip that you leave at the bar, okay? I mean, try yeah, it is. I mean it, it is. how much cost, uh, let's say, a treatment of, uh, I don't know, but you have an idea, a treatment of, uh, full treatment of uh, chemotherapy? I think that's just to open the door for you for that type of money. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, I mean, I, they were talking about a cheap, about a, a chemical that they wanted to put me through a regimen, you know, through the doctors. It was $12,000 per month. Wow. Wow, and you it's know, a cheap one. And and even, it's, uh, you know, I, I'm not a doctor. You know, I say people should follow their instinct and, more important, decide what they want to do. But for what I read and what I've been learning by myself, I would consider many other options before I go to the traditional uh, chemotherapy situation. This is my just me personal talking, as I said, you know. And, and maybe because I don't know. Maybe sometimes I believe that when it's time comes, comes, and... Uh, I want to leave it like that, but that's not about me now. Listen, I want to say I'm really proud that I know you, first of all. And, uh, well, thank you. And, uh, you know, we never met, but you influenced me in a positive way, uh, something that maybe I already had on me, because as I said, I'm not a smoker. I don't consume marijuana. My last time I smoked, I was probably 19, and I, I don't like it personally. But when I started to follow your uh, 
let's say, activism. You follow your, 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 your sometimes it's a challenge because you know you realize how much you have all against yourself. I see a man of your age that you're not a kid anymore on the street of Phoenix, 100 degrees with your sign uh, for months. And I say, wow, you know, this is powerful. At the same time, it's inspiring. And also reminds me, if I really believe in freedom, this is something we should all treasure, the right of every human being to decide what they want to do with their body. That's for me beyond medical marijuana. It's as I said, you know, it's about the really concept of freedom. I mean, sometimes I get so frustrated when I see people in the, you know, on the high moral chair telling us what I should do, I shouldn't do in the privacy of my home, on the safety of my home, like, you know, they know better for me or they think about my soul. How dare you? This is not freedom. The freedom yeah. should be that we're supposed to do everything we want until we infringe somebody else's right. That's the point. And I really, as I said, you inspire me. You made me, during the last few years, I've been knowing you, I research more into this issue and getting more and more vocal and understanding, really, this is not about drugs or about plants like marijuana. It's about freedom. It's about control. It's about, you know, also uh, supporting a very corrupt system of private prisons that they really feast on uh, stupid idiots out there who really believe that marijuana, you know, is going to bring us to hell or they're going to bring us to become criminals or they bring us some sort of a society. So they need to put us in jail just because you smell a plant or just because you own a plant. That's completely wrong. And as I said, I'll do everything I can to be vocal about that. So I want to thank you for that because, as I said, we all inspire each other. And I had a lot of uh, inspiration from you, you know. Uh, I want to give you the floor, the last message, whatever you want to say. And I'm not saying this is going to be your last message, but let's say for a moment we're going to say hi to each other. I pray yeah. not. This is the message in the bottle for posterity for anybody who maybe never met Dennis or who met Dennis Bock. Go ahead, Dennis. You have the floor. Well, I wanted to uh, make it very clear that we don't have a drug problem when it comes to marijuana. We have a political problem. We've seen the states around us change their laws and benefit from it. There is a downside to legalizing marijuana, but it is far less than what we do have with the private prison system that is set up right now and the injustices that our citizens must endure. I have a web page called Arizona-First.net that has a platform that I have evolved over the years for what my issues are, and I'd enjoy that you take a look at it. Thank you so much for your time and uh, your friendship, my friend. Thank you, Dennis. I want to say one more time, one more time, please, uh, the GoFundMe page. As I said, uh, you don't need to donate a million dollars. It's you can the, the, the same money normally you waste at the coffee shop. Uh, offer a coffee to Dennis. Give him a chance to try something that may really save his life. And meanwhile, and it, it may give him a little bit of... I'll keep of, you updated. Go, uh, we'll keep you updated, of course. Please give again the GoFundMe page. It's GoFundMe, Dennis Bolke, B-O-H-L-K-E, medical. Yes, and by the way, I'll post on my Facebook page. I, I give a little donation myself. That is uh, the link to Thank you. GoFundMe.com forward slash Dennis dash Bolke, B-O-H-L-K-E, uh, dash medical dash fund. But I will post that on lovegunsfreedom.com. Dennis, I pray for you, and I'll be in touch with you. Please, be do the same, okay? Okay, thank you for the call. Thank you. And your friend. time. Thank you, thank you. All right, that was Dennis. Dennis, and as I said, uh, this is the hour about love. You don't need to uh, think anymore about left, right. Or Sometimes we need to just let all this, even our political ideas. Don't get me wrong, I'm pretty vocal about it. At the end of the day, we are human beings. When we see a human being that is in, in need, I believe in, in helping each other. I do not believe in government extortion. This is the time we can prove that we have a good side of us, that we don't need the government for everything. We don't need the government to, ex to, to extort our money and to redistribute them. We can say, you know what? We can take care of ourselves. Just give us the chance. This is a chance. This is an opportunity to show that, you know, we're not selfish. And today we're helping somebody who is in need. And tomorrow, maybe somebody else may help us. That's all I'm saying. I'm not asking to donate, uh, sell your home and things like that. I'm talking about 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 5 bucks, a dollar, doesn't matter. The point is, Dennis Bok, 
Balky, sorry, sometimes my accent. But the point is a man who is in need and uh, is trying a different way to cure himself. He has a few months left on this planet. Let's give him the chance. That's all I'm saying. Let's take a break. This is Luca Zanna. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom, the hour about love. Please do not go away. I'll be back. Hey, you. Yes, I'm talking to you. You deserve a break. Enjoy a moment of indulgence. It's time for Zanna Coffee. Guilt-free pleasure. Zanna Coffee is the organic coffee to amplify your senses and enhance love for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Only the best organic and GMO-free coffee beans from around the world that I selected. Zanna Coffee brings you happiness in every cup. Fair trade certified sustainable organic coffee. That means we do not use slaves. Free Zanna songs with every coffee bag. Find Zanna Coffee at www.zannacoffee.com www.zannacoffee.com Get your coffee bag now. Don't be cheap. Life is too short and you deserve the best. Zanna Coffee. And there we go. We are back. This is the final hour. Uh, Love, Guns and Freedom. This is Sunday the 30th. Is it the 30th of July? I guess so. You know, I really... You know, I feel, I feel, I feel a lot in these shows. Sometimes I, sh- you know, I should just uh, be a little bit more like a doctor or a lawyer. That you know, you do your show, you do your interviews, or you know, they care, but not really. Never be too emotional. Never be too involved with your guests or with your clients. If you're a lawyer or, or patients, if you're a, dad, a doctor, it's difficult for me though because I know these people. Uh, I also interact with them, many of them. After all, I've started to become friends, or at least we know each other. Then, of course, Facebook, we start to know our lives and what we like, things that we have in common. And even I never met him. For example, I never met this man, you know. But I, I know him. Or I know him enough that I consider him a brother in freedom. Seriously. Uh, and I feel like I've been knowing him for a while. Because I did. And now the fact that he may be gone, maybe in a few months, or who knows. I feel like maybe a family member is gone. And more important, it reminds me of really who we are, human beings. Sometimes we get trapped in our lives. We get trapped in our dreams. And, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, we are here, we have limited time, we've been given, I think we, it's our, my opinion, they, it's a sin to, to, to waste this time. Why otherwise we have this time? I say we should use it the best way we can. And everybody must find what is the best way, you know. So we try to follow our dreams. And many times, um, could happen that our dreams also have interaction with other people. Could be anything. So the point is, even just the dream to to be an advocate for, for peace or for freedom or justice, that's a dream that you see how many people you can interact and can change life, they can improve life. So we are here. I really believe we all are somehow interconnected in some ways. So the point, though, regardless, at the end, there is an end. And we never know really when it's going to happen. I remember like... Uh, a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, one of my first shows, you know, I did a show, me on, on the bed, in the bed, and that was like my death bed, my last few hours before I die. No, I wasn't dying, I was doing fine, but I wanted to try to visualize if that was the moment that I had a few more hours before I leave this body. And was my deathbed, you know, when people see yourself in the movies, you know, they see this situation like an older man on the deathbed, you know, and surrounded maybe if he's like it by family. Well, guess what? I was trying to recreate this scenario, me on the deathbed. And many times, you know, many people don't have the luxuries. Maybe you can get shot or maybe you're going to get in a car accident. Who knows? Or maybe somebody breaks a rock in your head. So to die on the deathbed, I think it's a pretty nice death, especially when you're surrounded by your family. And loved ones. So I was thinking about Dennis, you know, that I really pray and, I, and I, I want to believe that he has a chance because we all still have a chance. We don't know when the time really is coming. 
And maybe really this new type of cure, since the doctor said, hey, there is no way you're going to be getting out of this. You're gone. By December, you're gone. We're talking about a few more months. So this, uh, this uh, sort of uh, cannabis oil extract supposed to have uh, some medical, let's say, healing cures. We'll see. Meanwhile, regardless, I think we have a great lesson to learn. Think about it. Because sometimes we are so distracted and so busy. You know, don't get me wrong. Paying bills, run, go there, get your kids from school. You know, go there, try to make some money. Oh, take care of that. You know, of course, the politicians and Obamacare and the Trump care, whatever it is, care. And all this stuff that is very important because, as I said, politics, and this is not just an abstract concept, is also about your quality of life. It's about uh, your freedom that you can still retain. Politics is an instrument that pretty much can control your life. And I tell you, this is very important. We must get involved. But at the end, there is an end. All these things that we do, that we think they're really important. Think about you can be a judge. You can be the president, the most powerful man, or at least one of the most powerful men in, on the planet. Or you can be just a regular homeless. At the end, doesn't matter. You're going to go away from that body. You're going to just leave it behind. You cannot bring with you your money. You cannot bring with you your things, your stuff. It's going to stay behind. My opinion, all you, all, all you can bring with you is going to be who you were, who you've been as a human being. There is an espr- uh, phrase, I think it was in the Lord of the Rings. So I, I don't want to take, take credit, but let me see if I remember right. You know, bottom line, your actions will reverberate in eternity. Something like that. And that's true. What you do in this life is going to stay with you in eternity. That's what you bring with you. That's what we bring with us. And also, you know, people may say, you know, I don't believe in another life. That's fine. I don't care, honestly. You can believe whatever you want. I'm still not sure even if I have, a, you know, a reincarnation or, or maybe I'm just going to go somewhere else. I don't know. I wish I knew everything. I don't. I have the feeling that I've been here a few times. I have the feeling that it's not my first uh, rodeo on, on, in this planet. Maybe just my impression. I believe that maybe I've been reincarnated. Maybe I have still to do a few more rounds. People say, oh, you're not a good Christian. Maybe I'm not. Okay? I don't want to start to get preached. I don't want to preach. I just say, whatever you believe, though. You know, this is not going to be the end. And if you think it's the end, that's fine. But the bottom line, you're not going to bring with you to the other side. Or even if you have no side, there is no other side. You're not going to bring with you all the things you were doing here. All the stuff you accumulated. And don't get me wrong. I'm the first one to believe in capitalism. Free enterprise is not because of the money, it's because of freedom, because of the spirit of independence, to try to be able to, A, take care of yourself. Don't rely on others. And that's what I believe, you know, capitalism can create, can create true wealth. And I'm talking about true capitalism. People say, oh, you're really, but that doesn't make sense, you know, if you believe that you're not going to bring this stuff. Exactly. I still don't give, for example, the dollar. And the stuff is not my God. I work very hard for everything. Everything. I appreciate even a crumble bread because I work for the crumble bread. Okay? Nobody gave it to me. At the same time, I know that I'm not going to bring it with me. So that's why I don't care which car you drive. I don't care about my cars. I like that my cars, are, they drive good. They're safe and, you know, they're decent. But I, I don't have gods among the things I own. Everything I own is an instrument, is a tool to try to have little quality of life. That's it. That's it. I already know that I'm just using it. Don't even get me going with the house and land because, you know, that's pretty much we are renters. You know the story. The true owners are governments. But that's not the point. I don't want to talk about that. All I'm saying, you know, Dennis Bocchi, I love you, my friend. And I hope you guys that uh, are listening to the show can at least uh, get an opportunity to learn more about Dennis for his, the cause of freedom that is being struggling all these years. And as I said, this is not about marijuana because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't eat marijuana. I can't even stand it. I, I hate the smell, by the way. 
I guess why it's about freedom. Many people enjoy it. Many people find a great medical benefits. And I said many people maybe just like it. Like I like my wine or like my beer. So what's the problem here? Should we have freedom in this country? Should we be living under Sharia law or under the American Constitution? Should we have rights? Or should we be just, you know, begging always for some privilege, like the privilege to smoke or to drink something? So that's my point. No, I believe Dennis is a great guy, when, especially when it comes to the cause of freedom. And I, now I really believe he deserves a chance. And we can help him out. Remember, this is not government. This is not taxation. This is not extortion, legalized extortion. It's about really showing that we can be, as human beings, compassionate to others. The true love to, to give and share. That's what it's about also capitalism, sharing because you want to share. Some people also in the business, you know, normally you share because you have benefit, but also we are also human beings. And business, by the way, can also do the right things, but you don't need to share as a business, as a human being, $10, $5, as I said. You can go to GoFundMe forward slash Dennis, D-E-N-N-I-S dash Balky, B. O H L K E dash medical dash fund. Anyway, in case you I didn't clear, it, send me an email. Go to uh, go to lovegainstfreedom.com. I'll post it this Sunday. That's my point. What if really this marijuana essence oil cure it will be able to somehow do a miracle? Stage four cancer, something that doctors already say you don't even bother to come here. You're dead. Few more months. All I say, we, we, we should, uh, we should give him a chance. And this is a, as I said, just my humble request. You do what you want. But remember something, one day, it's gonna be our turn. That's why I'm not sad sometimes, you know, for people who go now. Of course, emotionally, I always think, you know, it's, 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 it's something we're selfish, you know, we don't want him to go. But if I really tell you what I think, we are the ones stuck in hell. Whoever goes, he doesn't have to put up with this hell anymore. Seriously. Think about it. What do you do the first thing you do when you're born? You cry and scream. That's it. You scream. That's the life. You cry. And pretty much we have to, you know, struggle. No matter how many, you know, people say, oh, there are people who have billions of dollars. Guess what? They have their own problems, trust me. How many people with a lot of money, they kill themselves? So don't think everything is just shining because you know, it's gold because it's shining. Okay? That's not the case. The human race, humanity, we have a lot of struggle to go through, even with our own sometimes, you know, evilness and limitations, okay? So that's my point. All right. What I said, this was a different hour. Normally we talk about serenades, food, and happy things. But I think this is the really true love, to listen and to support a fellow human who really wants to be heard at least, and give him a chance, helping him out. To maybe, you know, to stay around for a while with us. Maybe showing also that would be, maybe that would be the miracle. What if really this cure with cannabis is going to save him? There would be a message to all the politicians, all the lobbyists that they work for Big Pharma. Huh? That would be great. You know, I always say, I always believe in, there is always hope till there is life. And as a worst case scenario, guess what? Uh, you... I don't believe that death is, 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 is the end. And I don't even believe it's the worst thing. Honestly, it's a transition, in my opinion, to a new, better life, probably without politicians, without governments, without taxes. And that, for me, would be right there, heaven. Okay? All right, guys. If you want to support this show, I need your help, as usually. You can go to www.lovegunsfreedom.com. You can see the different links. You can buy my new book. Uh, perfectly crazy on Amazon.com. Download any of my songs, Zana.us. Whatever you can do, I appreciate your help. Now, God's willing, I will talk to you next Sunday. And thank you very much for your support. Support. Oh my God. Support. You've been listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We'll look at that. Ciao. Yeah.